This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Um, I'm going to record for you guys so that you can go back and re replay it, just like I recorded Dream School 101. I'm going to record this one, and it'll be a private link that I'll send to you so that you can go back and watch. All right. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come before you. I thank you for everyone here in this school. I thank you for those who are on their way, everyone that this word will touch, Father. We thank you for our prophetess and instructor right now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for keeping your hands on her and her family. We thank you for the words of wisdom that are coming forth. Father, I ask you that everyone's hearts and mind be receptive to the word today, Father, because we know it's biblical. We know it's sound. We know it's used for edification and encouragement. And this will help us, Father, in our walk. And we thank you for that right now, Lord. I actually bless everyone's heart right now and soften it, Father. Let this word penetrate their heart, Father, that they may know your word, how to carry it out and how to uplift other people, Father. Lord, we've been seeking you, Lord. Your word says to seek you and we will find you. And we thank you for this opportunity to come together as like-minded believers, Father, excited on one accord and bold before Christ. So, Lord, we ask you right now that everything that we learn today, God, just remain in our hearts and our spirit that we are able to recall it easily by the Holy Spirit. Whenever we need this information, Father, that we go to you before any other man, before um, any other device, any other resource, Father, that we seek you. And I pray this information just strengthens and encourages us. We look forward to it, God. We've been excited, and we're excited for the things to come. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. We ask you to bless each and every one of one of um, the members on this line, those who are to come, Father, and we just ask that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear in the name of Jesus. We yes. ask for forgiveness of our sins, and we just ask you to remove any preconceived notions that we may have had or had, or anyone who's reached out to look for this type of information, Father, that may have gotten in some, some incorrect or um, information that wasn't accurate or biblical we ask to remove it right now father that we may grow on this foundation yes. father to continue to build in jesus name we love you we thank you and and holy spirit just take over we love you father in jesus name amen 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 that was beautiful hallelujah yes i'm i was trying not to catch the holy ghost because i could really feel his anointing even now it's almost like i'm telling y'all the warfare i had today was like no other the average person probably would have threw the towel in and just was like, the heck with it. I'll just refund their money and just, I mean, I'm not, it's not even worth it. But I, luckily for me, my characteristic, my personality is one that perseveres, is one that is tenacious, is one that is relentless, is one that is fierce, is one that's from Philadelphia. So it's bold by nature, by default, West Philly. <laughs> so... I did not get knocked down, but I'm telling you, my laptop, y'all know the story, it's, it's a baby, it's seven months old, and the enemy got stuff going on with it like it's 12 years old. I mean, stuff that should not be happening, be happening only when I'm about to go live or about to teach. But today was like, hands down, it was like just coming at me. I mean, as quick as I could kill one roach, another one. So, whoo, I'm gonna just, pray just to pray all of that off of me and if anyone else on here has had a long day rough day exciting day anxious day or whatever the case um father i just ask that you just remove all that excess weight off of us that there will be no hindrance to anyone's deliverance to anyone's re receiving of the word that there would be no 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 doorway no cracks no windows open that the spirit of offense will seep in i pray that you bridle my tongue that i speak in a manner that i recognize these are the apple of your eye and so father anything and anyone that comes against them comes against you so father i decrease and i ask you as rabbi to come through and use this vessel to teach holy spirit in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen um i sent y'all an email quite a few emails <laughs> And that was that was part of the warfare. But um, in one of the emails, I sent y'all a prayer that the Holy Spirit literally gave to me. While I guess that was the whole, you know, nothing happens by chance or by coincidence. I believe Holy Spirit was like, no, you need to redo this because you forgot something. 
And so in one of the emails, I had to send you guys a prayer. And I pray, I hope you prayed that because um, the scripture does tell us that when the sower, which is the teacher, is sowing a word, that it doesn't always fall on fertile ground. Sometimes, and matter of fact, you got one out of <laughs> one out of five options of where it might fall. Um, you know, it might fall by the wayside. It might fall on stony ground. It might fall on thorns and bushes. And then there's that 10% chance that it might actually fall somewhere where it can grow and take root. So you got all these things weighing against us and that 10% chance that you might actually receive. So I just, I pray y'all pray that so that your spirit is calm. I pray that if you were rushing today, I pray that if you were late for something today, if you were arguing with someone today, that all of that weight, just, just take it off of you, lay it at the altar, lay it at the feet of Jesus. The word of God says that the earth is his footstool and the heaven is his throne. So if we abide near his feet, then you could just throw stuff off, lay it at his feet, Wakes laid at his feet and, and gone and, and be in peace. So in Jesus' name, I, I do declare peace over you. Um, welcome, Minister Messiah. We were waiting on you and a few others. Um, two people said they're having trouble. I don't look, I don't know what's going on, but I pray for those who to be on here would be on here, those who God wanted, that there was no problems, no delay. And so without further ado. Um, we are going to do, God bless you, man of God. You missed our introductions earlier. We were asking uh, where everyone was from. I don't know if you can talk, but briefly just tell us your name, your ministry, or uh, where you're from. We want to give you that opportunity. And also, if make sure that you, you can you see us or can you see me? Because I think I'm the only one with my camera on. But can you see me? Can you see the screen that I'm presenting? I just want to make sure um, that everything, everybody is all right. Um, Minister Messiah, are you able to unmute? If not, that's okay. No pressure. I'm not a bully, I promise. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome back for those of you who were a part of 101. We had a good, let me tell y'all this. We had a nice handful in Dream School 101 because I talked about everything. Literally, we, we, I mean, we talked about everything. But when you start talking about witchcraft, people going to run far away from you. <laughs> they like, I don't know, I don't, you know, you know. <laughs> I don't really want to be involved with that. So people are like, mm, you know, you keep it. And so I was expecting that. I was expecting it. But like I said, um, we're going to go ahead and go forth because this is a season where witchcraft is at an all time high. And we dare not be ignorant to Satan's devices. And some of us have been dreaming dreams where some of these symbols do project witchcraft, sorcery, divination. Either somebody is doing it voluntarily to you or involuntarily you're doing it to yourself. Um, either a witch is assigned to you or a witch is assigned to your family. Whatever the case may be, you're going to come in contact, especially if you have an anointing and a desire to know to know God. Um, Y'all remember in, in the book of Acts, where I think it's chapter 10, where um, yeah, Saul and Barnabas just was anointed, just got their, you know, hands laid on them by the prophets, by the church. And as soon as they got sent out, the first person they encountered was a sorcerer. And so the sorcerer was, you know, beside the the um, the man of God who wanted to, who the, the word of God says he desired to know the word. And so here you are, the sorcerer is right there by the person who wanted to or desired to know the word of God. So Paul said, when I would do good, when I seek to do good, evil is always present. So it does not matter if you're working in deliverance, if your ministry is healing, uh, prophecy, it does not matter if you're a teacher, a preacher, when you seek to do good, evil is always present. And that's enough for me to want to study what my enemy is so that I can be aware of what's in my arsenal. So. 
um, <clears throat> y'all excuse me for my typo, but it's supposed to say do not disturb. So that means it's time now for us to turn our devices on do not disturb. Um, the only reason why I had not turned mine on yet is because there are people asking how to get in, how to get on, which I am now putting on do not disturb because I once I'm in my flow, most of you who know me know I do not want to be disturbed because Holy Spirit is going to, you, you will see the shift in me when Holy Spirit fully takes over. It's two different people. So we're going to turn everything off. Um, grab your essentials. I pray that you have your dream school. Study God, your Bible. I got all my stuff. Y'all know my, my typical thing is my highlighter because there's some things that I may talk about, but briefly, and you may want to go back and read over it some more. So you just highlight that part and say, hey, I'm going to go back and I want to read that again. So this is good to have um, in a pen. I say pen instead of pencil because, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to write something, jot it down fast, and then you go back and it's smudged. And you're like, well, what did I write? So. Trust me, I've been there, done that. Um, previously, in the dream, previously in the first dream class, we study an array of areas. Y'all remember, um, well, those of you who wasn't in dream school 101, we covered a lot of stuff. I don't know if um, anybody briefly want to just give us a synopsis of some of the things maybe you learned that was taught in Dream School 101 for anybody that wasn't in Dream School 101? Did you retain anything? Come on, y'all. Was, um, what I guess what sticks out with me is um, when we covered um, bathroom dreams, like deliverance dreams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people was wanting to know about that. That was a big one, a really big one. So, you know, bathroom. oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, I was just gonna elaborate. Bathroom dreams definitely do mean um, deliverance. So if any of you are dreaming bathroom dreams, do not fret. And if you are taking a bath in a dirty tub or using a dirty toilet, that is not a bad dream. It actually is a very good dream because it, it means that you have a tendency of being very transparent and you and you don't mind going through deliverance, whether it's publicly or privately. You deliverance is not a cuss word to you. And so I've had dreams where I've, you know, seen the tub was dirty and I was like, I can't believe I got in there. <laughs> um, so what were you gonna say, Sister D -Lay? I was going to say something that stuck out to me um, was the types of dreams. So, you know, we always go, oh, I had a dream from God or the enemy sent me a dream. Like we actually put them in their own columns. Like yeah. you can have dreams from God. The enemy can, you know, attack you and you have flesh dreams. That's yeah. not something I ever knew about. So yeah. we learned that and we actually went in depth and we were given it for people who weren't on there we were given examples so we could learn how to tell obviously we want to seek the holy spirit but it'll give us the inkling of okay where did this dream come from and uh, we did multiple examples um to show us what we could look for when it comes to those types of dreams mm -hmm. that's good that's a really good one yeah there are lots of dreams there are warning dreams deliverance dreams um dreams of prosperity dreams of um what's another one that i might have missed um instructions or guidance encouragement dreams comfort um and so previously in the first dream class we study an array of areas i'm on the very first page in your study guide we are actually going to flow through the study guide so you might as well open it up um and on page three is that's exactly where I am. We studied the different terminologies. I'm 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 flowing through the book because I'm going to skip over some of this stuff. Um, but I want you to at least be able to follow along. Um, in the second installment of the Dream School class, I will be covering a narrower a narrower alley of um, symbols. Instead of discussing a broad subject with many different avenues. We will discuss some of the most important dream questions in this fall season, beginning with things in our homes that cause, causes open doors 
for attacks um, and oppression. I pray that this study guide will cause a light to shine in your hearts that will manifest a uh, wisdom so divine that it will be nearly impossible to be deceived by Satan again. And then the scripture that I have down here is 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 6. Um, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 4, 3 through 6. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is actually not this is like a freebie because before you just start jumping into what is witchcraft, witchcraft symbols, um, and you know, demons, I want to actually talk about prophetic dreams just really briefly. This is a, a freebie. The Holy Spirit gave me this revelation, and so He has He has made it clear to me, and He's kept it fresh in my mind so that I do not forget to give you this. There are some of you, and this is a this is a prophetic word but the Holy Spirit shared it with me and I'm sharing it with you. Some of you are dreaming of particular prophecies. Um, and this is why your dreams, you're like, I can't, I can't put my hand on it. I can't make out what this is. You're seeing lions, tigers, and bears and people with four different faces. And I mean, that's prophecy. That, in fact, that was in Daniel, uh, that's in Revelation. And so if you're having dreams like this, please, 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 Make sure you you research prophecies, um, not the ones that are already passed and and came to pass, but prophecies that are still yet to be fulfilled. A lot of us are dreaming um, of horses. Um, I think we talked about horses in in the last class, but you're seeing horses, you're seeing weapons, you're you're dreaming of holding an. Uh, um, I know for me, my hand just randomly turns into weapons. It, it just, I mean, one minute I got, there's a gun in my hand and there was nothing there, but, it, you know, I motion like there's a gun in my hand. There's a, there's a hammer. Um, there's an ax. My hand just turn, turns into stuff. And so you, that's because he said, you are my battle ax. So it, it does not, um, you know, think it not strange that if you're dreaming, seeing your hand turn into a weapon because you are the weapon. <laughs> and so some of us are dreaming of weapons. You're seeing yourself destroy things and you're like, I'm not violent, I'm not destructive. Why am I dreaming about this? You're, you're probably tossing tables and tearing up churches. It's because that's the heart of God. And so it's not you, but it's the spirit of God in you. And so I just wanted to bring that out. Um, Revelation 28 and nine appears to allude to Zechariah 14 and three. So Zechariah, these are some examples of prophets, men, men of men of God who had dreams, and they saw prophecy. They the the, uh, the first half of the book of Zechariah, um, and the second half of the book of Zechariah are two different synopses. You got the first half that is talking more, that's geared more towards Zechariah's day, and then the second half of the book of Zechariah is all future tense all future prophecy, stuff that has not happened, that is yet to come to pass. So if you're dreaming and you see something that came out of Zechariah 11, Zechariah 14, it's because it's future. Um, that Revelation 21, 22 through 24 appears to allude to Zechariah 14 and 6. Zechariah was giving us things that he was seeing that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Um, like many other prophets, Zechariah saw isolated snapshots. Okay, he saw he saw um, glimpses is the word that I'm looking for. Glimpses of things, snapshots of things to come, um, events that seem to occur, you know, in the future. Um, 
as noted in the previous study guide, dreams in this generation will reflect the signs of the times. That is a prophetic word. Holy Spirit gave me that. Um, so a lot of our dreams in this generation are going to be prophetic. And that is why you are having so many attacks on your life, even, even having attacks on your dreams, because um, the enemy is assigning sorcerers. They don't even have to know you. They can be all the way in another country, but because in the spirit, they, uh, you know, they see you. No, this is a, this is a freebie, but I can, um, I can, you know, email this to you. Um, I didn't think to put this in there because it kind of deep, it kind of is off course of what the study guide pretty much is about, but we can do this as a separate, I can make this a separate, um, I can make this a separate um, study guide, but yeah, so a lot of us are dreaming end time stuff and the enemy does not want us getting revelation. He doesn't want us getting knowledge. He doesn't want us increasing in anything that will work against him. And so I want you all to be encouraged if you're having these dreams where maybe two nights in a row you were seeing prophetic stuff and then three nights out of the week you were under attack. It's because of what you saw. So we have to learn to cover our prophetic dreams because guess what? Satan sees it too. And so he is trying to get you to come out of agreement with the prophecy and come in agreement with him. This is another scripture reference, Joel 1 and 3. Tell you your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. I don't know how many, how many generations can y'all get out of this verse? I think it's like five. Tell, tell your children and then let your children tell their children and then their children tell their children and their children tell another generation. In other words, Holy Spirit never intended for us to be blindsided. He said, I never intended for you to be left uncovered. I never left for you, I never intended for you to be blind and I never intended for you to be uncovered. It was always a, a prerequisite in the, in the generations to tell the next generation. We have a duty. You have a duty, especially if you have children assigned to you. I think most of us on here, we have been assigned children by birth, children by default, children by adoption, children by spiritual um, advantage. And so whatever the case may be, tell them about the, the works of God, the things of God, the things that they should know about the enemy. Um, as I was saying on Wednesday night, that you, we are foolish if we believe that just because we take children to church, that that's enough. No, if we have no intention on discipling these children, um, but we're just taking them to church and thinking that they are covered because they're in proximity. Um, it's dangerous because the enemy is going to come at them harder than any child you know, simply because they're in the arena of the anointing. And all, all Satan needs is that one time for that child to tap into an anointing at a very early age. And so we have to disciple children. Uh, according to the scriptures, no generation should be without, um, you know, we should not be without the knowledge of God. We should not be without this information to accurately interpret your dreams. Test them by the Holy Scriptures. If you are receiving snapshots of future prophecies, then you are seeing end time revelations. Um, and these are just dreaming of prophecies. Um, if you are dreaming, these are just some scenarios that if you're dreaming confusion in a battle. For, I told you, I shared with some of y'all on, on this week that I had a dream where there was a, I was in the middle of a fight, a battle. There were men on both sides of me shooting at one another and none of their bullets hit me, even though I was in the, like a bullseye in the middle, but they killed each other. And I was able to pick up the spoils. That is actually in scripture where that took place. Um, so if you're dreaming of battles where there's confusion in the battle, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Zechariah um, has these scriptures. Remember, the latter books of Ezekiel and Zechariah uh, are not yet prophetic.
fulfilled. Their prophecies yet to be fulfilled. The latter half of Daniel not yet been fulfilled. In fact, the book of Daniel is not even in order. Um, if I remember correctly, the first four books are in order and then it's chapter six and seven and then you go back to five and then you go to eight. So Daniel, if you wanna read it in order, it's not in, it's not in chronological order the way it is. Um, if you're dreaming of earthquakes, these are some of the scriptures where you can find earthquakes that are in future prophecy, not, you know, already fulfilled past tense stuff. But now don't get me wrong. You can dream of prophecies that's already been fulfilled because God is wanting to show you through a compare and contrast of the turmoil you're in or about to go in or the situation you're about to deal with is going to be similar to this. So you just, it depends on the context of your dream. If you want to write that down, interpreting your dreams requires knowing the context of your dream. What do I mean by knowing the context of your dream? Who, what, when, where, and why? Who are the main characters in your dream? Because we tend to deviate from the instructions for ourselves just because we saw a few characters in our dream. The dream was not for your mom. It was not for your sister. It was not for your neighbor. The dream is about you. Yes, they you saw them in the dream, but the dream is always about the dreamer. Now, if you're seeing people in your dream, it can mean these. God is showing you how these people um, relate to you, how you interact with them, or maybe you have a word for that person, or maybe God is showing you their spirit so that you can be like, hey, I got to back up because this person, you know, what fellowship do I have? Do light have with darkness? So before you go calling up Auntie Sue and Brother Joe, hey, you was in my dream. It is very ignorant of us to release a dream with no interpretation. You're telling them about this dream, but guess what else you just saw? Confusion. Because now they don't know what it means and neither do you. You done told them they was in your dream and you have no interpretation. So that is ignorance. And you can you can sow the wrong seed if they're not ready to receive it. You got to first ask God, is this for me to know or for both of us to know, for me and the person? You, you got to have a talk with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, am I to really, and let me tell you this. You're not going to hear an audible voice say, release the dream. What it is, you're going to get the word nataph, N-A-T-A-P-H. Y'all know what the word nataph is. Um, I don't know if anybody remember. Anybody remember what the word in the top? Bubbling up in your spirit. <laughs> it's the bubbling up in your spirit. It's the, the, the Greek word for bubbling up or to drop or to quicken. So when Holy Spirit drops something in your spirit, it's in the top. If you have a dream about somebody, I'm going to give you a perfect example. A few weeks ago, I dreamt about a pastor. Now I'll be dreaming about a lot of pastors, but in this particular dream, I dreamt about a, a pastor that um, I've had dreams about before and they were always good dreams. So I knew that the spirit of this pastor was good. I had a dream about this pastor. We was fighting witches and I didn't release the dream to her because I felt like for what? But in the dream, I was in, I was a guest in her house fighting a witch that came into her house. So yeah, that kind of dude, you know, need to be released, but I waited weeks. And let me tell you, I wasn't even thinking about releasing it until yesterday. And that was because the Holy Spirit kept putting it in my spirit. It kept bubbling up. It kept uh, nataf. He kept quickening in me. Hey, you need to release this. Hey, you need to release this. So when you have something in you and it just, you know, it's, it's, I'm not talking about you don't have any discipline. I'm talking about you minding your business and Holy Spirit wake you up or interrupt your show or stop what you're doing and say, hey, you remember this dream? And you're like, I wasn't even thinking about that dream. I wasn't even thinking about that person. That means you need to release it. You are, and then the work, the more you hold it, whew, you're going to be in trouble with God. Uh, because the scripture says that if you know, um, you know, you have a word that will turn them from sin, but you don't release it, their blood, if they die in that sin, their blood is on your hands. And so you want clean hands to worship God in spirit and truth. So you don't want blood on your hands because somebody got caught by the devil sinning, died in that sin, and God recorded it. 
Um, so yeah, if you you got this bubbling up in your spirit, you're like, I just, I really believe I need to release this. Holy Spirit, if you bring this back to my remembrance, and I used to do this too, when I was um, at my previous church, I would dream about somebody at the church and it'd be like in the middle of the week. And I say, okay, Holy Spirit, if you bring this back up on Sunday morning, I release it. And what happens as soon as I see that person, it's the whole dream start replaying like it was just yesterday. And so I'm like, okay, I got to release it. But there are some things that Holy Spirit, you won't have a quickening. You won't have an unction to release it. It's almost, you know, you know, you don't have an unction to release it because it appealed more to you. You, you, it was something in you that went on like a light bulb and you said, aha, you had an aha moment where that dream not only showed you that person, but it opened your eyes to some things. Maybe it opened your eyes to study that particular spirit. And so now you've gained some insight and some knowledge and some spiritual wisdom on how to recognize people with that spirit. So you just have to use wisdom um, and, and, and it all boils down to relationship. If you're in relationship with Holy Spirit, just, you know, that's our husband. That's our husband. And with any wife, any good wife, you're not just going to take that credit card and spend up on shoes when you know bills need to be done and you, you need to sit down with your husband and talk about a budget. So with Holy Spirit being our, our husband, you're not just going to divulge secrets between you and your husband to pigs. I mean, because that's pretty much what you're doing. You're casting your pearls before swine um, and casting what's holy to dogs. I tell people all the time, you, you, you're not even saved. Why would I tell you my dream? Why would I tell you what me and Holy Spirit talking about? I don't, I don't know about to do that. Um, uh, so these are some more, um, the beast. If you're dreaming of a beast, I've had dreams of a dragon. That's future, future tense. Um, Antichrist, if you're dreaming of the beast, that represents the Antichrist. Um, if you're, here we go again, appearance of horses and horsemen. That, and that, that talks about not only Armageddon, but it also can um, relay or relate to a famine because some of the horses in Revelation and in Zechariah and in Ezekiel and in Isaiah refer to famine. There are some of the horses, depending on which color, white, pale, black, or red. One represents war. One was death. One was famine. Um, and so if you're seeing these horses, note the colors. We're going to talk about colors in a little bit. But note the color of the horse. Note what the rider looked like. What was the rider wearing? Um, I actually seen a witch riding on a black horse. But the person who I saw, I know, and was a minister. But they were dressed. They were they they. In my dream, I knew they were a witch, and they had put a um, spell on the pastor through his glasses. The spell, the curse, was spoken over his reading glasses. And so whenever he wore these glasses, he saw what the witch wanted him to see. And I saw all this in a dream. And so this witch was riding a black horse. Y'all know Jezebel, um, you know, Revelation talks about the horse and the riders. So these are just some things I wanted to just give to you as a freebie. Um, and uh, this is one of the ones we talked about in Dream School 101, dreams as warnings. A lot of us are getting dreams, warning dreams in this season because as, as the year ends and closes out, a lot of people don't usually make it. Um, it is a blessing and an honor and favor and a privilege to see a new thing because God delights himself in new things. It is a, it is a blessing to walk into a new year, um, the year 2022 or the Hebrew year 5782. Um, you know, it is a blessing. So dreams as warning. When we are not receiving dreams of revelation, we are dreaming of warnings. Joshua 6 and 18 is one of the verses. You can write that down for dreams um, of warning. Sometimes we bring a cursed objects into the home woo, and we ask God why things aren't going right. Woo. So he answers by revealing the open doors that the accursed object is responsible for. Some of us are having warning dreams because you may have ignorantly went to a flea market, um, secondhand shop, secondhand store, garage sale, 
or even a friend or family member gave you something like, here, I don't want this no longer in my house, put it in your house. And you was like, hey, I can use that. And you just took the item, set it on your shelf. And now every time you walk by, you don't feel right. But you don't, you don't never take the time to project the, um, you know, the, the item or the object with how you feel or your dream language changing or the dream, your dream code changing and shifting. It's because you you might have an accursed object in your house. So last time, last class, we talked about um, shrines in the house. A lot of people don't know that when you take obituaries and you put the candles and you put these people pictures up on this high table corner corner platform and you're burning these candles and you're saying prayers to them and you got their picture, that is a shrine. The Bible says there is absolutely nothing that the dead can give us. They have no knowledge. They have no truth. They they are forgotten. So um, it's all right to go, you know put them in a photo album, reminisce from time to time, go through it, look at it, show other people. But when you put it up on display and you got candles all around it, now that's you know that's you stepping into a whole nother thing. And some people have grown up with those in their house. I've seen them in some people's houses and I was like, oh no, I got to come out of here because if I don't, if I sit here too long, it's not that I'm afraid, it's not that I can't war, but if I sit here too long, trust me, them spirits are gonna try to attach themselves or they're gonna irritate the mess out of me. So <laughs> you start getting headaches and then you're like, well, what's this? Because you in a, you in a place that is cursed. Um, your real fight. Is in the invisible realm. Your real fight is in the invisible realm. Meaning the spirit, the supernatural world is, um, yes, right. Unnecessary warfare. Anybody got time? That's not my stuff. I say that all the time. Holy Spirit gave me that in the dream. He was like, that's not your stuff. And I was like, I woke up saying it. That's not my stuff. <laughs> that's right. That's not my warfare. Mm -mm. that's whoever live here because they they agreed to that. I didn't agree to this but if I stay and the same thing when I went to get my nails done y'all some of y'all know I ain't had my nails done since summer because I had a really bad encounter I walked into this this nail spa and I you know y'all know the first time I went I didn't take pictures but the second time I went into a different one I seen the same shrine and the altars I took a picture but I just, some, the whole, I'm not going to say something. The Holy Spirit in me just would not let me pay these people on this altar. They had, a, they had the, the Buddhists. They had, um, the, you know, the thing with the frog and it waves back and forth like this. That, you know, that is um, a shira. That's a, a shira grove. And so they had the, um, they had the three, uh, little trinkets and, and they had the offering. I mean, as soon as you walk in, they did not hide it. As soon as you walk in and they had the trinkets and um, some of y'all may have seen the pictures that I put on the group page, but, um, and they had the bowl. And then let me tell y'all this, what got me, the Holy Spirit had my eyes, like just looking at everything. The, the cash register was on a different table, but yet they take your money on the altar. Why are you not taking my money over there? Why are you taking my money right here? So the minute I pass my card on this altar or my cash or whatever, however way I'm paying, which I had a card, if I pass my card on this altar, they take it over, over there to that table to, to swipe it, bring it back and pass it again on that altar. And here I am signing my name on a receipt on the altar. I have just ignorantly and involuntarily come into agreement with whatever deity that was sitting up on those altars. So when the Holy Spirit, I was looking and I was like, no, you're not about to hand me. No, you're not about to take my card on this altar. So I went around it and handed it to him and he handed it back to me. But, and I told the people that was waiting, I said, y'all don't put your money on this altar. Um, and when I went into it, the first one I went into, it was set up like a triangle, um, not a triangle, I'm sorry, a, a pentagram. And the altar was on the, the right, um, each point had a, a deity and I was like you got to literally step to pick your color and then the man will tell you to go this way and then he'll say go this way and then you the last stop is and I was like 
Holy Spirit, my eyes are so open. I said, I, I said, no, thank you. And I left. I didn't get my nails done. And I haven't since because I just don't want to. I, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll find a place. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But if y'all see these businesses, um, I know I was telling Minister Mario, um, I thought he would be on tonight. But last time when we were teaching together, um, he and I were talking about these deities. And he took his family to a Mexican restaurant. I think, no, it was an Indian restaurant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And they had the altar and he took his family. He said, no, we, we're gonna go get pizza. <laughs> and so that's when I really began to get in, in, involved with um, logos. And so if you missed that teaching, you need to go back and watch it on the different logos. But the, spirit, the supernatural realm is more real than the room we see, because why? Everything that takes place in the spirit realm, if it's not challenged, will manifest in our realm. And these, y'all remember in the Bible when um, Jesus, when the woman came into the temple, she had a spirit of infirmity. She was sick. She had a sickness. But Jesus, he declared, he he spoke to it as a as a spirit. And so, sicknesses is not normal. That's not the children's bread. That's not our portion. And so, even though you know, like Paul, you can have a thorn in your flesh, a thorn in your side. Or somebody shooting uh, fireworks of all night. Shut that, please. Of all night. Really? See, I'm, that's because I'm getting ready to get into this. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we just pray right now. God, we ask that you, I don't know what that is, but we just cover right now the atmosphere. We cover, Father God, from every sorcery, every witchcraft. We just shut the, the atmosphere down in the name of Jesus. We, Father, your word says that you will put uh, uh, a fire. Us. So, Father, we just ask a wall of fire around us, that everything that is not like you, everything that's trying to masquerade, even monitoring spirits have to be scattered in Jesus name. Amen and amen. That was a distraction. Y'all realize that? Mm -mm. No. And what was I saying? <laughs> Listen, we're not about to stop. Y'all, we might have to do some warfare to get to the end of this. But look, as long as two or three are gathered for his name's sake, there he is also. So Holy Spirit is with us. Um, but they they know that my mouthpiece is getting ready to, to decrease some things into the atmosphere. Um, our dreams are littered with many signs and symbols convey a deeper understanding of our natural lives. Um, so the spirit realm just pretty much mirrors what's about to take place in the natural. So this is why we need to pay attention to our um, Ecclesiastes 9, 4 through 6, that's also, no, I don't think that's in your, I think this is part of my introduction. I don't think this is in your study guide. But write that down, Ecclesiastes 9, 4 through 6. Give y'all a second because I'm, I'm writing it down too. Keep these scriptures, keep them on hand because these are things that are going to help you in warfare. Things that the enemy, when he tried to pop up with stuff like that, you can counteract, you can come back, you say, no, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's not him. Uh, verse four of Ecclesiastes nine says, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. This is referring to talking to the dead, shrines, talking to ancestors, dreaming of loved ones that passed way before you was born. Um, the Bible says that it's better to be a, 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 a living dog than a dead lion uh, because there's nothing that they can give you. Verse five, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not a thing. They know nothing. They can give you no, you can tell the dead something that, you know, when we talking to um, our ancestors and we, and we talking to them in dreams, you can tell them all your business because you are alive. But they can't give you nothing that you can use except a lie. So why would you talk to somebody about all your stuff? That's like telling the, the thief what you got in your house. But the dead know not a thing. Neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. They cannot offer you, promise you, give you nothing. 
the lady in Santeria, she has the um the feminine hygiene stuff called honey pot. Y'all look that up. I think I gave that in one of the other study guides. Uh, matter of fact, no, I think it's in the book. One of those is in one of my books. I think it's in the book Witchcraft: Invasion of the Five Territories, where I talk about. Yeah, it is where I talk about that lady um, from the owner, the founder of Honey Pot. But you can Google it; it'll come right up. Honey Pot is in Target, Walmart, you know, local stores. But she said that right after she got initiated in Santeria, she had a dream. And her ancestors told her the recipe for the feminine products. And these women are using them. And a lot of them are reporting having feminine problems after or having worsening feminine problems after using these products. It's because the ingredients came from a, a demon. I'm not about to put, I'm not about to use that. Um, verse six. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So pretty much the Holy Spirit just blotted all that out. There is no communication to be done whatsoever to any degree. There is zero tolerance for Christians talking to those who have died. You know, just you in a funk forever. Like, no. Uh, if they were saved, they went to a better place. And if they were not, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but you can cherish their memories, the good times you've had, but please do not relish on them too long. Uh, because then you'll, you, if the Holy, I mean, not the Holy Spirit, if the, the enemy starts to see you, because we do have monitoring spirits, talking to this person all the time, praying to this person all the time, crying over this person all the time, He's going to use that as an open door. He's going to initiate an attack on you with a monitoring spirit masquerading as that dead person. And you're going to be sitting there talking to it, eating from it, signing contracts and everything else. So we got to be careful with doing stuff where the enemy can see. Just like he watched Jesus and he thought Jesus was hungry because he saw that he had not eaten and he thought he could tempt him because he was weak. He was in for a rude awakening. He was he was tired, he was hungry, but he was not weak. So Satan does not, he's not all knowing, but what he does is he has to use monitoring spirits to get, you know, to surveil you, to get information on you. So that cockroach on the wall, that rat, that mouse, them shadowy figures running and bumping in the night, all that stuff is monitoring spirits. Um, and he said, they have no love nor hatred or envy so when you say well my dear grandma be talking to me at night she loved me no they the dead cannot love nor can they hate you nor can they be jealous of you they are gone what in the world Who, why are they doing fireworks on what's today october 23rd what are we celebrating and if, if y'all notice it got louder okay i guess i gotta get louder too are demons hiding in your home? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Are demons hiding in your home? Um, Hollywood calls it paranormal activity. That, you know, whatever, you know, whatever floats their boat, whatever makes them sleep well at night, which I doubt they are, uh, whatever sells movies. But discerning Christians call it demons hiding, even lurking in the closets. That's on page four of your study guide. They hide in attics and even display openly on bookshelves and media cabinets in our homes. Yes, there could be demons crouching behind veils of darkness in your house. Every case is different and unique. Some people experience disturbing, uh, more extreme manifestations, while others may have more hidden and cunning spirits demonizing them. Ooh. Hollywood has its view and dramatized versions of these manifestations. And that's exactly what they are, dramatized and magnified for television. But make no mistake, these unseen trespassers are on a mission to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Um, and the verse for that is John 10, 10. What are demons? Evil spirits, that's what they are. Technically, they are fallen angels 
disguised to assume the role of gods in our lives, little g. While hidden, they wreak havoc and most people never discern their presence, but instead blame God Almighty. Let me turn that lamp on for me. They blame God Almighty. Scripture says in the last days, perilous times shall come. People will become lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, and blasphemers. Thank you. They will be disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, and despisers of that that are good. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 3. Much is said in these verses. For one, we see the behavior of the people will be blasphemous and despisers of those who are good in the last days. Scripture says that people will call evil good and good evil. That's in Isaiah 5 and 20. Um, with so many people turning their back on God and all things holy unto him, so many more people are being deceived. Once deceived, they are unable to discern the enemy. In fact, they believe Satan is good and God is the evil one. This is why homes become breeding ground for demonic manifestations. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Second Timothy 3, 6 through 7 is basically giving us a synopsis of why people are demonized. For one, he says, you're always seeking truth, but never coming into full knowledge because you're seeking it on YouTube. You're seeking it in yoga. You're seeking it in all these things, Santeria. You're seeking it in all these religions and you got these statues and you will not seek God. For, you will not um, call on him. You will not ask him to open up your eyes and reveal tr truth. You're always seeking truth, but you never see real knowledge. I thought that was interesting. Um, there is a plethora of people in search of cleansing and refreshing of energy through new age occult and rituals. The Bible says they are ever learning, but unable to gain any real knowledge. In other words, their research and study are vain. It's vanity, especially since they really do not desire to seek truth, but false truths. The purpose of this class and study book combo is to revive the minds of people and restore what Satan wants to remain hidden from you. Searching for a quick fix to something like energy, which is not mentioned in the Bible, makes their search never ending. They all this talk about energy and, and you gotta, you, Lord Jesus, I don't even know the language that they use. All I know is I keep hearing it everywhere I go. Oh, you have such good energy. I'm like, what's that? Don't, don't speak that on me. <laughs> Um, hiding on bookshelves mean um, like you have an object given to you from somewhere, from somebody, or a book given to you from somebody, um, and that book, um, you know, that object is a curse. The Bible talks about bringing accursed items into our house. So you have this statue of the Virgin Mary, and you, you know, it's, an, it's a curse because we don't worship, we don't worship anything man-made. Um, that's just like when we were talking about the, the cross. While it's a very sweet, beautiful piece of jewelry, that's all it is. It's, this cannot protect me. This did not keep demons off of me. This does not rid anything coming from in and out of my house. That is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. Now, what it is, I think it was Sister D. Lynn or Sister Terry, one of y'all said, it's a good conversation starter. It'll, it's, it'll allow somebody to walk up to me, ask me a question about my faith. It'll give me an opportunity to witness. It'll give me an opportunity to testify. But I'm not about to hold on to this like and kiss it and do all this other stuff like it's supposed to do something. It's, it's, it's not going to do anything. It's man-made. Man-made it. It you know Now, just like the word of God is man-made, but it is God-breathed. The word of God says it is God-inspired. Um, so this is God-inspired. Um, you know, just they say holding the Bible, um, you know, you just walk around holding the Bible and, and people are blessed. There are some people who eat the scripture. Um, yes, through the reverence. Um, you got the statue sitting up there and 
You're like, for what? Why is that there? We got to be careful of the stuff we bring into our house. Um, I have friends who are Catholic. They're not really friends. They're more like coworkers. And they're Catholic. And um, they're always trying to, you know, they're so nice. They, they are very nice. And they're always trying to give me cards and stuff. But, you know, and they give me Starbucks gift cards and stuff. And I, I don't, I don't re-gift it. I throw it away. I don't do it in front of them. Because the Bible says you come, Paul said, I became many things that I might win some, but it does not go in my house. That part they don't have to know. But I know, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that brings me to my next point. Do you have a curse objects in your home? Let me tell y'all how I had, a, um, when I graduated Bible college, another fellow minister in the, I don't think they were in the class, but they were in the church. They gifted me a picture frame. And the picture frame was one of my favorite scriptures. Well, I didn't know that something had been prayed over this picture. Now, you know, it was scripture. So I was like, okay. And it was, it was glass, it was heavy, it was big. But there was a it was an accursed object. I had a lot of manifestations after I brought this thing in my house. I even had a smell. There was an odor that would come and go. And I mean, I cleaned out the refrigerator. I emptied the trash. I did everything I thought that I knew to do, which was already done. But I was doing it anyway, just in case I missed the spot. And when I would leave out to go to work, come back, it would still be there. And so I had two of my uh, two, two friends come, come by. And I wanted to see if they would smell it too. Because sometimes sorcery, witchcraft, when it's projected at you, other people around you won't see it or hear it or feel it or none of that. So I, you know, I asked them and I looked at their face and, and um, I was like, you smell it, don't you? And they was like, mm hmm. And I, and I told one of my friends, I said, you have, you have permission to walk through my house and tell me if you pick up anything. And sure enough, she went right to my son's room. And that's a whole nother story because I had to do deliverance in his room. There was a skateboard. I think I shared this with y'all, a skateboard and a mirror. Um, my friend, she's from Alaska. And when I tell you to hear her pray in tongues and her Yupik language is heavenly. It is beautiful. It, it's almost um, when, when she pray, what I heard in the spirit was she causes, she calls angels. When she pray in her, in her Yupik language and her heavenly language, it's almost like you can feel the thump, the thunder of angels rushing. I mean, it's beautiful. And so she said, if you sit on your son's bed for just a minute and be quiet and be still, she said, it'll fly, it'll run by. And sure enough, I mean, as soon as I sat down beside her, it was like, a, like somebody walked by me because they stink. It went that way. And I said, I, I was like, what is that? I, and she said, mm-hmm. And so when I turned to follow the odor, there was a corner mirror on his floor. And in the mirror was a reflection of his closet that was in front of me. So when I looked at the mirror where the, where the odor went, because that's where it went, then I looked at the, the mirror and where it was reflecting, there was two things that I could see in the mirror. I saw a Bob Marley poster and a skateboard. Well, I didn't feel anything on the skate on the um, Bob Marley poster, so I didn't even bother going there. It was the skateboard that drew my attention. And I said, well, look, you know, I don't know where this skateboard came from because I did not buy it. I don't know who gave it to him. And so my son wasn't home at the time, but I flipped over the skateboard and there was a picture drawn on the bottom of the skateboard where it looked like my son and it looked like um, like a devil was choking him. And I could see teardrops that was drawn in the picture on my son, that was supposed to be my son's face. And in the caption, the devil said, give me your son. Whew. I said, you cannot. And I ripped the, the drawing off the skateboard and there was another picture of a beast under the um, picture on the skateboard. I took the whole skateboard. I took this, the pictures on my patio, burned it. Um, and that's another thing. It would not burn. It was three of us trying to light it on fire. It would not burn. So finally, the Holy Spirit gave me an unction and he said, say in the name of Jesus. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to burn. And then it lit. 
I took the skateboard, put it in a black trash bag, tied it up, took it to the dump. I prayed over it that no other child would find it. I began to renounce the stronghold, the tie that was. So I would have never known that was there if I was prideful to let anyone in my home. See, there are sometimes you don't get deliverance because you don't want nobody to know. I mean, I trusted them and I knew that, you know, I had been to their house, cast out devils. And so why, why would I be prideful? Um, you can come to my house because I'm human too. And so um, she was like, yeah, she was like, you know, it's, it's in here. And she, and she was right. And it was traveling back and forth through the portal that was the mirror. So the mirror, I had to bag up and take it to the dump too. Um, so that's a curse object. I don't know who gave my son the skateboard. And I don't know who put the mirror in the corner like that where they can get in and out, but they are, you got to be careful. Check your children's room. Did you arrange it like that? Has somebody rearranged? I mean, you know, you, you just, you, you know, they're cunning. And they get by us because we're always glued to these devices and we don't know what's going on. We don't have a clue. Do you have a curse items in your home? It's time to get that spiritual eye, that spiritual magnifying glass. Do you have a curse object in your house? Can one put? Oh, um, I missed that question. Can somebody read? I can't see. Can somebody read? I just it pops up when I'm in when I'm presenting. It'll pop up and then disappear. Can somebody tell me what that question was? Are you referring to the question that says, do you have cursed objects in your home? Yeah. That's what it said, but I don't know what it, was somebody asking me that? It says, do you have a cursed objects in your house? Can one pray to nullifying any power on a cursed object in the house, even though you can pinpoint it? Can you what now? Can you can you pray against it? Is that the question? Can you? Yeah, it's saying can you nullify the power on the object? Oh, I think it's, yeah. Um, you have to again ask the Holy Spirit. You have to. Um, oh, you cannot. What do you say? You can't pin it. Um, you have to pray and ask Holy Spirit how to go about this particular item. If you don't know that it's there, you have to pray. And ask Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. See, there was an odor. I pray that my five senses are activated in the spirit realm so that I can smell spiritual stuff, that I can hear spiritual stuff, that I can see spiritual stuff, that I can taste and touch spiritual stuff. So my senses are activated. So when I say I kept smelling, and I was like, what is that smell? What is that odor? So if your senses are not that strong, God may show you in a dream. He may show you the book or, you know, something, a gift. He might not even show you the gift, um, the actual item, but he may show you a dream where somebody gave you something. And in real life, somebody really did recently give you something. He's telling you, look, hey, I need you to go into worship, go into prayer mode, because the minute you activate those two realms of prayer and worship, you are heightened in the spirit realm. You are liable to start you know, going towards stuff you that was in plain sight. You just didn't have a clue it was there. Um, when you start, you know, singling out accursed objects, that's a, that you have to go in with Holy Spirit. You know, you, you want to go in with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him, Holy Spirit. For me, now you, I, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna just be honest. Y'all know I'm transparent. When I started asking, I didn't, I didn't immediately asked about accursed objects what i did was i began to ask god to show me if i had any demonic logos in my home that i was supporting financially and i found nabisco cookies with the levi i didn't know that their logo was a leviathan cross and i was like oh my god i got you know we got this stuff in the house and so i just started rambling and going through stuff as I was led, I didn't go anxiously. I didn't go nervously. I didn't go frantically because that's another spirit. Uh, but I went as Holy Spirit led me. And it seemed like each week he was showing me something new. Uh, I think my brother in Christ, Minister Mario, called me one day. He was like, sis, we can't drink Pepsi no more. I was like, well, I've been stopped drinking Pepsi. I, you know, I'm a Coke girl. I like Coca-Cola. 
So he was like, well, I can't drink Pepsi no more. I was like, why you can't drink Pepsi no more? And he was like, when you turn the can upside down, it says, is dead. I said, well, you better stop drinking. <laughs> so when you begin to ask God for something, you, I tell you, you, if you mean it, you better be careful because he going to show you. He going to answer you. And if you're not ready to, you know, to be on that level yet, I, had, I was teaching on the logos. And I had someone tell me, you know, that's just too deep for me. And I was like, okay, I'm glad you was honest. You know, that, that you know, that's, that's too deep for me. I was like, okay. But, um, you know, if you are wanting to, because the Bible says deep calleth unto the deep. So if you want to know deep stuff, deep will call into the deep. And so, yeah, you can nullify it, but it's, you, you're not really nullifying what you don't know because, you know, you have to be you have to be sincere and you have to be precise. Holy Spirit, this is the thing that um, you know that I saw, and do I need to get rid of it? He'll you'll you'll get an unction in your spirit. Yes, get rid of this, or um, you can't keep it, or pray pray over it. So there are people who gave you things innocently; they didn't mean no harm. And Holy Spirit, you know, may allow you, to, like I was given a journal. Um, two people gave me a journal. Everybody knows I write. And so it seemed like I'm always getting gifted journals. And so three, matter of fact, three people, now that it comes to my remembrance, three people gave me journals. One of them I could not use to write my dreams. The Holy Spirit said, but you can use it to take notes. And so it was a very cute, it was my favorite color, blue. It was big, like I like. It was hardback. I love hardback books. Um, it was everything that I love, but I could not write dreams in it. I don't know why, but I just obeyed. Um, there was another book given to me by someone who was very jealous of me. And so I had to pray, uh, pray, you know, because I kept dreaming about this person. I was like, why am I dreaming about this person? Because I had something that was given to me from them, and there was a spirit of jealousy attached to it. So I had to pray that off, pray that spirit. You know, that was something that I could pray out. I didn't have to throw the book away because in, in fact, I liked the book. It was, it had my name on it. It was inscribed to me. And I just thought it was beautiful. It was leather bound. I love leather bound books. And so the Holy Spirit said I could keep it, but I just had to pray the spirit of jealousy off of it. And so you just have to go in with the Holy Spirit. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I see some questions. Um, you know, at any time y'all can you can ask you can ask a question. I told you it's hard to see this. Uh, I don't want to miss no y'all make sure, please. If I skip your question, don't let me don't let me hang up tonight without answering your question because that's exactly what the enemy wants me to do. Um, I'm going I'm going to take my time with this. I'm not going to rush the Holy Spirit. I feel the heat on me. And that is the anointing. So I'm getting ready to tap in. I'm telling you, the anointing is on me. Um, he said, I think, it, what does it say? Joshua verse 7. Joshua 7 verse 11 through 2. Oh, he said he was, a, he, you're reminded of the lesson. There, yes, exactly. Yep. That is exactly right. And so. Joshua by revelation knew because they could not go forth. So you will, you will know if you have an accursed item in your house because you can't go forth. My son had that skateboard and he was getting into a lot of trouble. He just wasn't focused. And then he was telling me he couldn't sleep at night. And I was like, none of that is normal. That is a sign of, a, you know, a person demonized. And so, yeah. And then let me tell you when that demon, he was bouncing around in the house because it would go by and I would smell it and then it would disappear. Uh, it would run by and my friend would smell it and it would disappear. And she said, no, we're not about to do this. She said, because this is trying to make us paranoid. And now you're dealing with the spirit of paranoia. She said, but we're not the ones paranoid because we see it. It's, it's the one that's paranoid because we're about to cast it out. And so as soon as she said that, the Holy Spirit in the top, he dropped in my spirit strategy. Y'all know strategy is my favorite word. He dropped strategy in my spirit. He said, and this is why I tell y'all when you bless your house, start from the back, work your way to the front. This was the strategy given to me by God. So I started with the back room 
and I worked my way, you know, I did the bathroom, I did each room, each bedroom, I did the second bathroom, I did the laundry closet, I did the kitchen, and then I worked my way to the front. I, no, I did my back patio, and then I did the front. Because if you if you have that strategy, you don't have to worry about missing a spot. You don't have to worry about the spirit of confusion or, you know, you think you got that bathroom, but you really didn't. You missed it. You think you got that closet, but because you started all over the house, you didn't have no clear strategy. So I started in the back room and worked my way and you could smell it. It was strong in the front door because every area had been anointed. Every area had been cast out. Every area had been, um, you know, um, replenished and prayed over and anointed so you the smell was strong in front of my front door and so i opened up the front door i took that oil and i drew a bloodline in front of my door i said and you will not cross over you i said lord i draw a bloodline that the enemy cannot cross i draw uh you said you you will put enmity between me and my seed and and, and the devil's seed i said this line represents enmity where it cannot come to my seed again i said now go i command you to be, uh, loose my house I, Lord, I said, God is Lord of this house. There is a commander here. This house is not uncovered. This house is not found empty. This house is not swept and garnished. You cannot reside. You are trespassing. And when I say um, two pictures fell off the wall as they were leaving out. And I threw them pictures out too. I said, they, you, look, they can go too. <laughs> That's it. So I had a full blown manifestation full-blown manifestation and you will have full-blown manifestation the minute you start getting them out too you might have tvs cutting on phones going off and everything the kids calling you and you like they don't never bother me like this what it's because you're trying to do warfare can you elaborate on when you are filled with the holy spirit and you're in someone else's home and you rebuke and bind that unclean spirit that's a good question the Bible says that wherever your feet tread, that that is your land. It is yours. So I don't care who house you in. It got <laughs> listen. It might not leave that family alone. Or I'm gonna put it like this. I'm gonna put it this way. Holy Spirit, give me the right answer. When they go out, because they have to go out because of the Word of God and because of the anointing and the power that the person is walking in, they gotta go. But because that family or that household did not put them out, the minute you leave, that family is going to be worse than when you got there. Because once they go out and they come back, the Bible says they find it not swept, not garnished, but empty, they will bring seven more back in. So I don't tend to go just casting out in people's houses on people in general that did not ask for it. Because now I'm going to jeopardize them more i'm going to cause them to be demonized more because the authority i walk in they gotta go and then when i leave because i don't live there to keep them out they're gonna come back so again everything goes to wisdom if you in somebody's house and, and they dealing with demons then you need to leave i um hope that answered your question all right so don't be alarmed be alert this is not to scare anyone tonight. I just want you to know that this is so that you are alert. This is so that you are not um, ignorant to Satan's devices. So what is witchcraft? Witchcraft is to alter or change the destiny of a person. If there is no resistance on the victim's part, witchcraft, has no power to uh, has no power to subdue you without your will, without your willingness or your permission. Um, so what I mean by that is, if you don't challenge it, if you don't resist what is being sent to you, if you don't resist the thing that you saw, then you came in agreement with it involuntarily. Because to not walk in your authority. To not put the word of God on the situation is saying you accept what Satan has said about you. So witchcraft, they know there are laws in the word of God, laws that we ignore because we think the times have changed and there is none. But Satan is very well aware of the laws of the spirit. He knows that he needs agreement and that he can get it if you don't, if you don't choose God 
you choose him. And I'll never forget this. One year, we went to Judgment House. I don't know if y'all are aware what a Judgment House is. You can go on YouTube, type in Judgment House, and you can look at some of the Judgment Houses. But it's a, it's pretty much just a walkthrough. Y'all know I'm a writer. I'm, I'm a playwright. I love to write plays. And so I love Judgment House because it's a live play, a live theatrical, spiritual um, reenactment of a scenario. And you can follow people through their life, through a situation, through a scenario. They die and you follow them to judgment. And some get sent to hell and some get sent to heaven and you follow them to hell and heaven. You get to see all of that. And I remember in the hell scene, y'all gotta look up judgment house hell scenes. They be phenomenal. This one scene that I was in was hot. The room was hot. It was dark. They had the fog machine. Oh, they made it look so real. You could hear, um, it was audible. You can hear the howling and the screams. And I was like, oh my God, this is too real. And the guy that they had played Satan, his costume was like literally, uh, you know how when you're in the dark, but something lights up in the dark, his costume was illuminating in the dark. It was like green. And so he said something that I'll never forget. There was a lady that had went to hell um, in the judgment. She got sent to hell because she rejected Christ. And she said, this is a mistake. I don't belong here. This is, this is not right. This, I, this is a mistake. And, and the guy that plays Satan said, when you reject in him, you chose me. And I was like, whoo, that right there just stuck out to me because in essence, that's true. It's true. He said something so powerful. I think that was like 2017. I still remember in 2021. But that is true. When you reject God and his word and his laws and his statutes and his commands, you choose what Satan. And then the, the man that plays Satan told her, he said, and to think, I mean, he was so cunning. He was so, um, he, he played it so well. He was just like nonchalant and just taunting. He said, and all that I sent to you, you still chose me. He said, I took your money. I took your health. And I did this and I did that. And you still chose me. And I just was like, whoop. And that's when I made up in my mind, Satan, you won't have another thing that belonged to me. Because Deuteronomy 28 and 12 says that God will bless the work of my hands, that the heavens will open up and pour out rain unto my land, that I'm the, the lender and not the borrower. Hallelujah. That he will open up good treasure. I begin to stand on the word. Hallelujah. But um, let me get back because I was going to get worked up. In the book of Nam, chapter three, we see a city full of murder, dead corpse, robbery, lies. You see all this stuff. Um, and this, it, the scripture is not talking about natural um, shootings and destruction, but spiritual destruction. Verse four tells us why it is so. Nam chapter three, uh, if you have your Bibles, highlight that scripture go there um or you can just listen to me read it real quick but um i'm in nam chapter three verse three and it reads in the king james the horseman lifteth lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses and there is none end of their corpse they stumble upon their corpses Verse four, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the um, well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. What this is talking about is because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the, of the witch, of witchcraft, of witches in the neighborhood that sell that sells the destiny of nations of cities
That's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm praying. Holy Spirit. Can y'all can y'all hear me and see me? Can't see you. We can hear you. Now I can see you. Woo. Yes. I told y'all we're to do some warfare. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, oh my goodness. And I just um got a message. Somebody told me that they're they're having trouble with the internet. I'm like, you you you're just gonna have to bind and press because <laughs> I don't you know, of course, the devil doesn't want nobody getting in. He doesn't want me teaching, but he cannot have his way. He cannot have his way. And we can't get mad at the devil because he's doing what he's assigned to do, kill, steal, and destroy. But we are called, we are a battle axe. We are a weapon of destruction. We are God's weapon of war. So when Satan does what he does, we do what we do. End the story. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm telling y'all, if this line goes down, all we're going to do is move it over to Zoom. And if Zoom go down, we're going to move it over to <laughs> free conference call. If free conference call go down, we're going to be Facebook Live. We're going to get it done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, I t I'm telling y'all, because the multitude of the whoredoms of the, of the witchcraft in neighborhoods, oh, Jesus, they're so... There, uh, you know, there's so much warfare, there's so much crime, there's so much wickedness, so much evil, so much violence, so much terror uh, in, in particular cities because there are people practicing sorcery. Yeah, I said it, devil, and you can't shut me up. Cry loud and spare not. I'll get loud. I'll put, get, where my microphone? <laughs> get my microphone and declare it loud. Um, there's so much wickedness because of the sorcery that people are tapping into in particular neighborhoods. Um, what's the uh, minister name that I always get messed up? And Sister Terry, correct me. Um, the guy. John Ramirez. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, his testimony is awesome because he tells us insight into the life of being a warlock. And he said that he would spend hours a day astro projecting into neighborhoods because if he can get the neighborhood then he could get the people so this is why you see poverty in certain neighborhoods this is why you see certain areas are are you know murder i'm from you know west philly north philadelphia west philadelphia always clash it was always um rivals always um the spirit of murder um it's not brotherly love. It's every man for himself. I, you know, I grew up hearing that every man for himself, every man for himself. They have a murder app that tells you every time a child under 18 is murdered. My son downloaded. I'm like, why would you download that? Why would you? But um, they have that. And so uh, they have a, a mural that says, welcome to Philadelphia." Like, you know, somebody has spoke that and people have gotten to agreement. Uh, what Sister Terry said, same thing about Baltimore. What they say about Baltimore? They be say more careful. To, they be like, welcome to body more. Body more. See? And somebody somebody somewhere said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's call it that. <laughs> Nobody said, let's come out of agreement. Everybody said, yeah, well, this is welcome to, welcome to body more. Welcome to, you know, be more careful. Like, come on. Um, but this is what we do. Um, this is this is this is serious stuff, and it comes in so many forms that we don't know. We can't. We got to be. The Bible tells us the different forms that it comes in. They do this. Th these um these sorcerers, they conjure. They you know they they conjure certain spirits that is giving them certain powers to project into our dreams, into the people's dreams. Th these uh witches. I'm telling y'all, they they are so cunning. They do this to manipulate you. These witches and warlocks that are appearing, uh, and people tell me, oh, an angel came to see me. That was not an angel. Nothing about the behavior said angel. Nothing about the encounter was divine. Nothing about the message was, um, you know, enlightening. And yet people are saying they, they saw angels when that, in fact, was not. Um, so... Uh-oh, somebody's trying to, I don't know what to tell them. They just gonna have to <laughs> pray their way in like I'm doing. I'm praying my way to stay in. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what to tell them. But you can't be bothering me. Um, they do this, it's, it's a form of manipulation. They will never walk up to you. Now you got some in some countries will walk up to you and tell you, you don't know who you're messing with. I'm a witch. I'm a, I'm a bruja. And um, you better not mess with me. But here in the States, they are, they're not that bold. They do all that stuff. They, I mean, I, I call it the Absalom spirit. Because Jezebel going to let you know she don't like you. Jezebel going to go out with her dignity and she going to go out with her pride. She going to put her lipstick on and die like a woman. Because a lady, they say a lady knows when, when it's her time to leave. But an uh, Absalom spirit, that spirit will go behind your back and raise up a whole crew against you. And you will not know it. And they will be your family. So yeah, the, these witches, I call them, they got Absalom spirit. They they go and they conjure, they put your name on these demonic altars. They put your name in their pot. That man, Minister Ramirez, John Ramirez, he said in his apartment, he had a cauldron that was big enough to put a body in. And he was going to, he was going to sacrifice his first body. So I'm thinking an apartment, how do you get a cauldron? How? how? Don't they put fire and stuff around? Don't they bruise? I'm, I, I don't know, but he said he had a cauldron in his apartment. And so that just tell you, you live in an apartment complex. You don't know, you you can't sleep at night because the person above you, next to you, below you, probably all in sin. And so you sit here trying to pray, pray out an environment in a sinful, you know, atmosphere. So, yeah. Um, where we at? They transform as an angel of light, which looks like, let me start from the beginning. These witches and warlocks are appearing as angels transforming of light, which looks like your deceased relative, loved one, or friends. Mm. They do this to manipulate. Oh, Jesus. But what you don't realize is that while you're physically at rest, your body is asleep. And whatever you do that they ask you to do, or you are accepting from them, this is the covenant being achieved. This, okay, now this is the, they're facilitating a covenant with you while you're asleep. They're appealing to you as something different. Maybe a grandmother, a relative, food. They're appealing to something that they can get you to say yes to. And whatever you do that, they ask you to do or are accepting from them, this is now a covenant being achieved to now facilitate whatever evil in your life. Hence, you have what Nam 3 just described. So what with that spiritual foundation, I want to give you some symbols that denotes witchcraft, dreams, or being attacked in a dream. When you dream of sorcery, you don't have to ask, am I dreaming of sorcery? Because if I have to ask you, do you believe that you dream this, that do you believe you dreaming of sorcery and you say yes, then, then it is. <laughs> you know, if you have to ask, then it is. Um, because it's a different feeling. It's a it, it's dark, it you it's gloom, it's heavy, um, it's sadness, it's it's a uh, fear, it's nervousness. It's all the things that are not the Galatian fruit of the spirit. Um, dreaming of sorcery, a false prophet. Withstood them that seek and desire to hear the word of God. Withstand to resist or oppose. When you dream of sorcery, the Bible says it is a false prophet. Um, it, this could be somebody in your church that's posing as a prophet, posing as a man or woman of God, and then turn around. You trust them and they tell you, you, you know, you confide in them. You tell them that you have some supernatural manifestations. They tell you, bring me a ribbon or bring me something from the area. Get this. Bring me something from the area of the manifestation. Bring me something out of that room that I can use as a um, as, as tangible. Woo. Should we still want? I, I missed that.
Oh no, you should be on a new slide by now. It didn't change. What in the world? No, it's not changing. Hold up, y'all. I'm glad you said something. We we gonna do y'all gonna help me do warfare. Look, <laughs> oh my goodness! Still praying in tongues. <laughs> Jesus, help us, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that 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 seeing eye. Man, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're supposed to be seeing something else. Um, yeah, false prophet is responsible when you start dreaming of sorcery. Uh, the Bible says. Um, it withstood them that seek and desire to hear the word of God. That, that was the verse I gave y'all earlier in the book of Acts, um, where Saul and Barnabas were sent out, set apart. God said, set them apart for me. The first person that they saw on their new assignment was a sorcerer. And the sorcerer uh, withstood the governor. This was a man of promise. This was a prominent man. He had a man of influence. and this sorcerer did not want him to hear the word of God. He did not want him to, um, you know, get saved, hear the word of God, get knowledge. And so that that's sorcery. Whenever you're around somebody or around a place and you can't get the word, it's there. The man of God, the men of God were there, but this spirit was trying to oppose the governor. Um, so that's sorcery. Okay. Whenever Saul and whenever Barnabas was trying to, you know, um, minister to this man, I think his name, what was his name? Y'all, somebody look that up for me real quick. Look, check, look in the book of X. It's not, I said 10, but I think it's X chapter nine. Um, Cause that's one of my favorite scriptures, but Acts chapter nine. Is it? Yeah. I'm trying to see what verse it was. Simon. Yeah. That was his name. Simon. Simon was a sorcerer and he was only, he was around the, the um, the governor. He was around him in Acts chapter nine and he wanted to hear the word of God. The, the Bible says he desired to hear the word of God, but the sorcerer withstood him. And Paul being filled with the Holy Spirit, his name was Saul at the time. He, he was going by his surname, um, saw him. The Bible says he saw him. So your spiritual eyes need to discern sorcery. It's anything that opposes, anything that resists. John, First John says that, there are many antichrists already here and you will know them because you have an unction. That's a whole nother teaching, but you have a special unction, a special anointing to discern sorcery, witchcraft, antichrist, all that stuff. You, you, you discern that stuff. Hallelujah. Dreaming of necromancy is a sign that someone is projecting sorcery at you that is the number one dream that i'm hearing in this season everybody talking about they their grandma their relative their husband their neighbor was talking to them and i can almost assure you if they don't renounce that dream the very next dream they're going to have is going to be them eating in a dream or signing something because they're coming with an agenda and the thing is to stay so secret, so hidden that you don't recognize what the agenda is. As far as you concerned, that's your dead grandma, your dead grandpa. They don't want you to know that it's actually a demon. Um, yeah, dreaming of dr dreaming of the dead. Necromancy is what the Bible calls the dead. It's the deceased. Oh yeah, he put he put the scripture in the chat box. Now for some now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. Yep. Mm hmm 
Thank you for that. He put the scripture in there. Was it X8 or 9? Did I have that wrong? What did he say? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was 8. You're right. 9 through 13 tells that story. X8, 9 through 13 is that story. Um, yeah, dreaming of necromancer, necromancy. That is a familiar spirit to convince you to follow erroneous covenants, false covenants with an evil spirit. Whatever the spirit masquerading as the relative is the evil spirit you come in covenant with. So whatever spirit, I don't know if it's poverty, I don't know if it's sickness, I don't know if it's the spirit of cancer, I don't know. Whatever spirit that is masquerading as your relative is the spirit you're coming in covenant with. The dead cannot give any insight. We already went over that in the book of Nam, chapter three. The dead cannot give any insight or knowledge for your current or future life. The person whose tenure here on earth that has ended, according to scripture, they have no more say in human matters. Okay, I know we're gonna go by. What does the word say? The word says they have no lot here. They cannot appear as an apparition. They cannot appear as an ancestor or an angel. Um, they, dead people cannot come back as an angel. They cannot come back as an apparition or an ancestor. They, they don't come back at all. That is a demon. They have no more existence, no more showing up, no more giving you, uh, you know, when they was alive, they gave you counsel. They gave you instruction. They can't give you that now. You're going to have to find another source. Uh, they cannot appear as any of these things. It is a familiar spirit masquerading to get your agreement in what they want to send to you. It could be debt. It could be cancer or death. If you want to find out what the evil spirit wants to send, then give the witchcraft calls to stay. I, for one, do not care to know what is being sent. All I know, a curse without cause cannot stand. Proverbs 26 and 2. You want to know what they send in? Then you give it a reason to stay. Me, I'm good. I don't need to know what it is. All I know is it, can't, is it don't belong here. Whatever it is, it don't belong here. It's a gift I do not want to accept. Proverbs says, No, what? No, that's it. Well, Eli, right? No, that was it. Acts chapter eight was the one I wanted. That was the one I wanted. <laughs> Minister, he's still on there. You gonna get? He like you? You gonna get this thing? Yeah, that was the one I wanted. Acts chapter eight with um Elamai. Yeah, that was the one. No, that's not it. I think you're right. Chapter 13. You know what? You're going to have me sit here. That was their first mission, right? Okay, y'all. So this was a different story. Um, X chapter 8 was a different story. The one I was referencing was X chapter 13. Verse uh, 4 through 10. 4 through 10, X 13, 4 through 10. Yeah. And who, how do you pronounce that, man? Elamai, El Elamis, Elamas, the sorcerer, for it was his name by interpretation. Yeah. Thank you. Chapter 13. Um. So where was I? Proverbs 26 and 2. A curse without cause cannot stand. That means as long as you're not operating in witchcraft yourself, that means as long as you're not operating as a blind witch, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, as long as you don't have any open doors that will cause a, a, a curse to stay, then it won't stay. As long, I'm, And I'm telling you, nobody's perfect, but we all strive for a spirit of excellency. I think the Bible says that Daniel operated with a spirit of excellency. Um, when you strive with a spirit of excellency, it means that 
you do not close your eyes without repentance. You do not go, you know, throughout the week and not pray and not, you know, repent of your sins, but that each day your sins are covered. So because you don't know the nights is when the enemy is the most busy. So if you go to sleep and you ain't, you didn't cover nothing, you didn't cover none of what you did that day, you didn't cover no sins, then you there's a cause. There's a cause there. But if, you know, I make it my business that when we pray at night, me and my daughter, when we pray at night, we always repent of our sin. We always ask God to forgive us for sins knowingly, unknowingly, rather by omission, commission, to renounce anything that might have attached to us, attached to our stuff, so that we don't lie down with a cause, with an open door. Um, so that's the first one. Any questions on that before we move on to the next one? And then there's just some more scriptures at the bottom um, that you can go back and read. Sexual dreams. If you are dreaming sexual stuff, that is another attack. That is another witchcraft attack. Somebody is sending you so that a spirit, a, a succubus or incubus spirit can attach to you. And so you thinking it's normal, it's hormonal, it's a man thing, it's a woman thing, it's a human thing. No, it's a demonic thing. And who, you really are sleeping with someone in the spirit. And some people have spirit spouses because they see this person in their dreams frequently or you're sleeping with a stranger you don't even know who it is you know that that's a that is a spirit that is a demon they don't usually have a face so you don't even know all you know is it was a man it was a woman but you don't know who it was you couldn't tell me nothing about them no features nothing stood out um that's a succubus or incubus spirit and witches, warlocks will send you a sorcery attack, a curse, uh, a root, so that you can get caught up with this, especially if they know that you had problem with perversion in the past, you will probably dream dreams like this often. They will be relentless against you. Oh, I went too far. Um, any questions, did I miss? Make sure stuff be popping up and then it disappear. Um, sexual dr sexual dreams always have filthy, um, you know, if you they have a filthy meaning. If you're dreaming of sleeping with your son or daughter or a, a relative, incest, um, these dreams with sexual encounters with a stranger or dreaming that you are sleeping with a group of people or you're sleeping with someone in the midst of a group of people. You've been conjured. You've been your spirit has been called somewhere it should not be. Um, also, dreaming sexual encounters with a spouse. It could be your spouse. Mm -hmm. It could be your spouse that you're dreaming about, but you'll notice that it's not your spouse because maybe something different about them. Um, their behavior was different. Maybe they didn't look or act the way you're. Um, you know your spouse is but either way you should not be having those type of dreams um the bible says when man while man slept satan so tears matthew 13 25 through 40. sexual rituals are mentioned in the bible in the land of cana they were full of sexual sins and god warned the children of god against it paul also rebuked a young man for sleeping with his stepmother in the church of Corinth. In fact, he told the church of Corinth, y'all need to stop praying for him. Take your prayers off of him so that his flesh might be destroyed so that his soul might be saved. That's a harsh, but um, very necessary prayer to pray for someone who is on the verge of demise. You got to take your prayers off of him. Um, that their flesh might be destroyed, meaning they might get AIDS, they might get cancer, they might get in that car wreck. But then that once their flesh is damaged or destroyed, their soul now will cry out to God. So God is not interested in saving our body. He's interested in saving our soul. So he will allow something to happen to you in the natural to get your spiritual attention. The thing is, we don't want to get God to that place where he has to start stripping things from us 
and taking things off of us just to get our attention. Remember the story of the fly? I mean, the moth, the eagle, and then the lion. Listen, I'd rather hear him between the moth and the eagle. I don't want to see no lion because you can't swat no lion away. You can swat the eagle, you can swat the moth, but you sure cannot swat no lion. Once that lion jump on you, that's it. Whatever it decided to go for, the jugular, it's gone. And so those are the three ways the Bible mentions that God will speak to us, that it'll come as a still small voice like a moth. Then it'll come as a, if you don't, if you ignore the moth, he'll come as an eagle. And if you don't hear the eagle, he comes as a lion. Um, yeah, so the children of Cana were full of sexual sins. I don't know if any of you are aware of some of the rappers, artists, who, and there, it's not it's not a secret. This stuff is not hidden. This is not something you got to dig up for knowledge. It's hidden in plain sight. There are so many videos, especially on YouTube, uh, with with stars coming out, and they're talking about these elaborate parties. It's people like P, uh, Puff Daddy, where they said he had he has initiated a lot of the people in the industry. There are, you can, you can go back and watch it. There's several videos with people um, like Little Mo, what happened to her and things she saw, 50 Cent, things he saw, fabulous things he saw. There are so many people, Usher, things that they saw at one of Puff Daddy's parties. And they said he, it, um, they call him a fruitcake, but that's a spirit. He, he has a spirit of perversion. He likes men. He like he you know he has these parties where there's a room in a mansion where they're having orgies and so that is initiation too. Uh, yes, Kim Porter she told her version she wrote the book and so they have uh, what's his name exhibit. He said the same thing. He was like no. Uh, Fifty cents. Uh, he, he puffed that. He asked him to take him shopping and that was a, a initial you know initiation to see if he would accept and. 50 Cent said, no, I got my own money. Did he just ask me to take me shopping like I'm a woman? So he felt offended. Um, Orlando Brown, that y'all, I, I don't know if y'all know who Orlando Brown is, but when y'all finish with this, y'all need to go um, YouTube. Look him up, Orlando Brown. I know who he, I know who he is. He was bad and bad shit. Mm -hmm. Really bad shit. Bad, he was in bad shape. And I tell you, when I first seen his video like two, three years ago, I began to pray for him. Y'all have to, there's a follow-up. He just released a video of him giving his life to God. He he looks better. He's um um he's bright. He's he had oh my god. He's I mean he just looked like a full deliverance came over him and he's at the altar and he's praying and he's telling his testimony and i'm like man when i look at the videos of him that man couldn't even say two words that that went together he was he was talking about two three different things at the same time and he was talking about r kelly or somebody was his daddy and he was you know he was just out of his mind you know god will allow us to go out of our mind for a time and then he said, when our reasoning return, you give God glory, you give God praise. And that's exactly what he did. I love his testimony. It shows that prayer works. When God tell you, shows you somebody, you see them videos and they pop up on your um, news feed, pray. Pray, child, pray. Pray for them. And then God will let you see the fruit of your labor. I was so happy that I was like, oh my God, he got saved. His video just came out, I think like in August or September. Uh, he's off drugs, gave his life to God. Um, what else? The Lord is your strength. When you are sleeping, hallelujah, Jesus, at night, if you are dealing with succubus spirit, incubus spirit, these are sexual demons. If you are dealing with these um, spirits, you have got to shut the door. You've got to renounce. You have to reject because what they'll do is They'll, they'll, if you, um, you know, release in the dream, that seed can be used for spirit children, spirit spouses will use that. And then if you try to get married, um, or even if you are married, this demon is so territorial, it will cause so much friction between you and your current spouse or future spouse 
that you wound up leaving that person or that person wound up leaving you and you find a more fantasy, you're getting more fulfillment in a fantasy than you are in real life. I know, you know, I know couples because I do um, counseling and there's, you know, that you have spouses who will sneak off into the bathroom and they just can't stop what they're doing behind closed doors, even though they have a whole spouse. And yet you find more fulfillment and sneaking off into a room somewhere for two minutes. That's a spirit that's, um, it's, it's not even oppression, but it's deep, it's um, possession too. Um, you, you know, they'd be like, I just don't know why I do this. I just don't know why, because there's something else controlling you. Um, this is why when we dream of this practice, it is an initiation of some sort. And if you do not understand it completely, writing it off as normal, you can then find yourself dealing with an incubus, succubus spirit harassing you frequently. Leviticus 18.20, Proverbs 24.10. If you faint or fail in your dream to comply with the laws of God, sleeping with a stranger or someone you know, or with your neighbor that is not your spouse, it means your strength is weak. You can read that in um, Proverbs 24 and 10. He talks about your strength. You're not having no spiritual strength if you're doing these things in your dreams and that you need to get more word, more knowledge so that you can fight. That's why I wrote that book, What's in Your Arsenal? You need to know how to fight. Not, I ain't talking about fighting in the natural because that's not where the fight is. The fight is when you're asleep. The fight is when you're somewhere off in la-la land, in a trance, thinking all by yourself, somewhere sitting home alone. That's when the real battle is. When you're when you're face-to-face -face with confrontation, that's where the real battle is. So how do you know what weapon to pull out for these different scenarios that you can't see? The Lord is your strength. You are not getting enough word in you and you have no strength to feed the spirit man to stop doing these things. When you are fed and fully full, you stop dreaming, doing these things. You grow in wisdom and knowledge and you can quote the word in your dreams. That's how you know you've gotten stronger. I'm not going to read all of this because this is something you you can study on your own. And it's, I want to get this some, I want to get to some other uh, symbols, but the third one, being chased. It's so laggy. Your, your screen should say, there it is. <clears throat> and to pause it and start again. If you dream that you are being chased, gunned down, shot at, stabbed up. That is a sorcery. That is another sign. That is a clear indication of not saying all dreams of chasing and shootings are witchcraft symbols, but most of the time they are. Running from someone, a creature or animal are symbolic to the level of sorcery being projected at you. So if you're being chased by a man or being chased by a lion, there's a clear big difference. I'd rather be chased by a man than be chased by a lion, but I declare that I'm not gonna be chased by either one. But I'm, for teaching purposes, there is a different level of sorcery projected at someone being chased by a person versus being chased by animals. Most of these dreams will be dark. The, this dark environment represents evil. All these dream symbols that pertain to witchcraft will not always be seen by every individual. The symbols will be shown depending on the level of sorcery being projected at you. This will also determine the frequency of how these dreams um, no, relay. Oh, Jesus. Um, if someone is constantly at the satanic altar for you with your personal items and doing rituals and sprinkling stuff on you, then your dreams are going to be relentless. It's going to seem like you're going to be tired. You're going to be like, how come I can't never seem to, I just can't never seem to shake this. Why can't I stop dreaming of me doing this thing? Why can't I stop having these dreams being attacked? Why do I keep, it seem like every other week, 
every week, every month, I'm having dreams of this same thing. That that is because some there is a personal witch, a personal sorcerer or sorceress that is projecting divination at you. This is this is personal. This is not some random witch somewhere um, somewhere else, you know, in Japan, Asia, India, in a Hinduistic um, cult culture that is projecting stuff. But this is somebody very close. If you keep seeing it persistent, if it's if it's random, um, you know, it's just because of the working, the anointing that you work in, that you operate in. But if it's consistent, you, you, you're you going to have to really seek um, deliverance, go into the word of God, do some soul searching, find out what's in your family line, what's in your bloodline, um, you know, what ancestral spirit did your great grandmother deal with? Did your grandmother find out as much information as you can? And if you cannot, like me. My family was all secrecy and they just, my grandma told us she came up in an era where we just didn't talk about stuff. I didn't, I told, I didn't grow up in that era. I came up in an era where we put all our stuff out on social media. So, so <laughs> that's not going to work for me. And so I had to go into the Holy Spirit, into the spirit realm. And, and I saw an ancestral demon and it was mad at me. When I say I saw all the blood that was shed over the years in my, in my bloodline, it was flowing over like a river. And um, when I stood in front of that river, it was like angels stood in front of me and it was like a dam, like they became a dam and they blocked the, the flow of the blood. And so this ancestral spirit was mad with me. I only seen it one time and I haven't seen it since. And that was about a month ago. And so I must be doing something right. Whenever you make a spiritual sacrifice to God, you go on a fast. Wait a minute, let me back up some because it's a part that I want to give you before I go to the next point. The dreams are being initiated by the spirits at the altar. Whenever you make a spiritual sacrifice to God, you go on a fast. You consecrate yourself unto God the Father and sanctify your atmosphere or place in your home. God is going to reveal countless dreams to give you strategy and clarity. Same goes for witches and warlocks who fast to, to demonic spirits and seek instruction and power to gain control in your dreams. When you proclaim a fast with the Holy Spirit, he's going to now show you, because, you know, some people, they fast and they think, okay, well, that's it. It's done. No, it's not. Even, even after the fast, even while you fast, you could be under attack. Why? Because you're asking God about something and he's showing you. But we don't tend to put two and two together. We, we, we think, well, you know, I'm fasting. I'm being attacked. You know, but how when I'm fasting? Now, sometimes it might be that the fast you're doing, God did not ordain or authorize. But most of the time, it's because you ask God something in particular. You started the fast. You proclaimed the consecration. So now he's showing you in your dreams. In the spirit realm, he's giving you a glimpse of what's coming against you so that you can bind it up and, and you can further um, pursue it in your fast. So this is why some of us are going through attacks even while we're fasting and after we're fasting because God is showing you, you what you asked for. Tell God thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, anything else in this section that I want to talk about? Um. Yeah, the 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 bottom part, the eating and the dreams. Are re the eating? Let me back. Let me move up a little bit. Let me go. The deceased relatives and dreams are going to be relentless. You're going to see them more and more and more. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're going to see them. They're going to be relentless. Hallelujah. But. The eating and the dreams are relentless. People think that the fast is over and that's it. But what people do not re realize is that after the fast, you can have sexual dreams. You can have dreams of, of necromancy. You can have people chasing you, coming after you, after you fast. It doesn't mean that your fast wasn't successful. It's just the evidence that your fast was successful. And these things are trying to reinstate itself. They are trying to come back, Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Um, good example of this, when you dream that a uh, monitoring spirit, evil spirit is in your house and 
and you proclaim a fast or you begin to renounce, you begin to shut those doors, you begin to purify your house, you begin to ask God to fence. The next night or the same night you dream that a demon is at the front door. That is a good dream. That, is, that means that what was in your house is now on the outside of your house. But with that being, with that wisdom of knowing that what was in is now out, you have to now check your spirit. I tell this to people all the time, check your spirit. Because if you walk out that door with an attitude problem and that demon is out there, that alligator, that whatever that principality was that you put out, six spirits, 10 demons, 20 demons, I don't care how many it is, you walk out there with the wrong atmosphere, the wrong environment, and they're going to have a, they're going to have an open door. Same way if you walk in, back in the house from work and you mad with somebody, you got unforgiveness in your heart, you bitter about something, you done slipped up and cussed, you got, and you did not renounce it and you did not seek forgiveness before you got to that door and you know it's a principality at the door, that, that could be an open door for it to come walk in with you. And then you'd be like, I just cast that spirit out. I just seen that spirit out on the front porch. Why, why am I dealing with this again? Because something in you was not checked. You did not examine yourself. And so it, it's all an opportunity. They look for cracks. It don't have to be no swung wide open door. It can be the tiniest little hole. I've had dreams where I seen a little teeny mouse hole at the bottom of my door. And on the other side of the, the mouse hole was cats. How the heck cats fit through a mouse hole? I will never know. But that was just letting me know the level of the spirit that was trying to make a way into the door. And so I can't remember what it was, but I had to, uh, you know, shut that shut that mouse hole because if it, if I would have let that mouse hole get any bigger and go un, um, you know, uncovered and not dealt with, it be it would have got bigger. So pay attention to holes, openings, doorways, cracks, back doors, attic doors, windows, all that stuff in dreams. I don't care if in in the dream you see car doors. Um, for two weeks straight from the beginning of September, from the end of August to the beginning of September, as the season was changing into the fall, the fall months, I dreamt every day, two weeks straight. And every night, them dreams had something with doors. I was telling people, shut that door, close that door. I, it wasn't my doors, but it was me telling people. So I knew that in this season, I was going to have to proclaim, I was going to have to preach from the mountaintops and tell people. Shut the doors, shut the doors, shut the doors, shut the doors. Seem like every dream, I'm telling people, shut that door, close them doors, shut that door. What you doing? Close that door, lock it. And so God was telling me, tell my people that in this season, if they have any open doors in this season, witches and warlocks are going to find a way in. They're going to astral project through those doors. Hallelujah. Sister D. Lester, I can testify to that. I think we all can. Shut the doors. Um, what was the scripture we read on Wednesday when Jesus came in and um, I think it was in Mark 16 and Luke 24 we were reading and Jesus when he when he um, was risen on the third day he met with the women he met with the two disciples on the way and then he met with all his disciples in the house and it said that all the doors were shut and then he appeared so when your doors are shut you can have an encounter you can have a visitation from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go to the next point because I want to interpret some dreams. There you go. It changed without me having to pause it. Um, before I do this, are, was there any questions? Um, some of these I'm going to skip over because they're in your study guide, but some of these I want to get to. Flying in your dreams. Symbolic to somebody else or evil power controlling you in the spirit realm. Whenever you see yourself as a human being just flying in a dream, that is a, that is witchcraft. In the world of witchcraft, flying in a dream is symbolic to somebody else controlling the strings of your life, like a puppet. There's there's someone, there's a demon, a principality higher up pulling your strings. Listen to this one very carefully because this one is very important. Um, if, if you are dreaming constantly of flying or even teaching others to fly, you could be operating as a blind witch. Highlight that. Highlight what not to do. 
Um, as mentioned in my book, Witchcraft Invasion of the Five Territories, blind witches don't always know they are operating as one. A blind witch, basically when somebody uses your spirit in the spirit world to do their bidding and evil. Mm. When you wake up from this, you feel exhausted, even though you may have had an eight hour rest. Also throughout the day, you will feel weak and lethargic. Why? Because they had your spirit working overnight. Y'all hear me say to some of you who follow me on Wednesday night teaching that my spirit man is, is um, a very accomplished, uh, it, it just goes. Holy Spirit will have me in China praying for somebody. He'll have me in the backseat of a, you know, with a family praying, laying hands, people I don't know. That's how your dream should be filled with people you don't know, because then it's prophetic. If there are people you know, it's because you you know you you know them, you're praying for them, and it could be a flesh dream. But if it's people you don't know, it's, there's nothing about your flesh that has anything to do with that. Um, I think some of you have been having dreams that you're in different countries, and so that means God is going to have a, a assignment for you. The the call in your life is going to not just be people in your community but you're gonna have a global impact. And so my spirit man, there are some of you on here um, who have seen me in your dream and I was either consoling you or encouraging you, covering you or imparting, doing you know, prophetic impartations. Um, I've had people call me who I don't even know personally and just say, you was in my dream last night. And I'm like, okay, was, I, was it a rebuke or was it comfort? Cause then the only two times the Holy Spirit will let, allow somebody to see me in a dream. And they said, well, no, you were comforting me. I was upset someone had left me and you told me that everything would be okay. And I told her what, you know, I began to prophesy some things to her that she was going to walk into a season where God was going to have to isolate her from some people. And he said not to cry over it, that he was going to comfort her. And so she felt better. I've, I've been in dreams of prophets, other prophets. And they told me, told me their dream. And they said, you know, you... I was praying and you came in my dream and told me that's not how you pray. And I was like, Lord, Lord, really? And they was like, um, they received it. And when they began to pray prostrate the right way, they said they saw me, you know, the Lord take me on a cloud. Like I went, like I was going to another place, another location. And so our spirit, the difference between witchcraft and spiritual is that you cannot control whose house you go into tonight. Ain't no way I could say, you know what, I'm going to be in d -Lynn's house tonight because I'm going to go there in the spirit. No, that is witchcraft. They astro project specific locations. Christians don't do that. We go to sleep, we mind our business, and voila, the Holy Spirit said, no, I need you here. You cannot control where the Father takes you. There are plenty of scriptures that support this. Um, Y'all remember in the Bible, uh, in the different transits that they went in, that Simon, um, Peter went in, that Paul was taken up into, that Andrew, was, uh, not Andrew, Philip was taken up into the, the, the carriage and he was talking to the eunuch in the spirit and he even baptized him in the spirit and he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I accept the preacher be sent to me? So the, apparently the eunuch did not have any spiritual or godly leaders that could preach the word of God to him. So the Holy Spirit sent him somebody in the spirit. I've had a preacher sent to me in the spirit in the dream. And they imparted Samuel and Joshua on me, anointings on me. So that is the difference between astral projecting. That is witchcraft. Prophets will, you will see prophets, you will see leaders. You will see pastors. You will see men and women of God. You will dream about them. You will dream you're in their house. You will dream that you you can describe what their furniture looked like. You can describe their bathroom. Whatever room you walked in in the dream, you can describe it. Um, the Lord took you there for a reason, to minister. You did not have any control over it. If you had your way, you'd have been asleep all night. But the thing of the matter is when you wake up, you could have had three, four prophetic dreams back to back to back. And when you woke up, you still was unbothered. You 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 had plenty of sleep. Um, Lord, they calling me on messenger. Hey, I'm I'm teaching. Uh, 
Um, so th that is the difference. When you when you are when your spirit belongs to God and He can use you to go wherever, He He'll use you to to go wherever He needs you to go to in the spirit realm. But if your spirit is being used by demons, you wake up tired, lethargic, groggy. You like, I feel like time just escaped me. Like I just laid down. What did I do? And then you don't, you wake up, you don't remember your dreams. You wake up and you tired. You wake up and you aching. Like you've really been physically fighting somebody. That's because the enemy had access to your soul, your spirit. And he was using you to, to manipulate other people. This is when you start having people say they saw you in their dream and they didn't like what you, something you was doing or in their dream, you was feeding them. You was offering them to, you know, to, um, to eat something. Now, there are times where we can dream of bread. That's manna, um, you know, um, water, tea. Um, th these are things that they ate, you know, the Israelites ate. This, these are spiritual foods. But if you sit there you eating a burger, chicken, candy, that, that is not, and there is nothing in the Bible that that is symbolic to of the Holy Spirit. That is all stuff that relates to gluttony because how many of us can eat one piece of candy? How many can eat one piece of chicken? You're going to eat more than one. So that's gluttony. This is a demonic spirit behind these foods. Um, and I ain't mean to go all deep on flying in the dreams, but um, because they had your spirit working overnight, the Lord told the prophet Ezekiel, he despises witches who cause people's souls to fly and hunt others. Yes, this is spiritual. This is biblical. Demons, sorcerers, witches, warlocks will cause your soul, your spirit to fly, to hunt other people, to manipulate other people. If your soul is, if your spirit is not right, Satan should not be having control of you as a puppet. He should not be a puppeteer with you on strings telling you, now go fly over here and go offer this girl some candy. Now go fly over here and get this girl to sign this contract and go fly over here and tell you, get, get your aunt to go do this with you. She's going to do it because they recognize you in the dream. And so their spirit thinks it's okay. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, said, God told the prophet, I'm against you, witches that cause people to fly and hunt because that's what they do. Um, where am I? Wherefore thus saith the Lord, behold, I'm against your pillows, wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly. These are demonic, uh, you know, when, when you sleep, you, the Lord says, when you lie down, your sleep shall be sweet. The, lab, the sleep of the labor shall be, everything is sweet. But when a person lies down in witchcraft, their pillow is in essence a charm. It's not sweet. They won't have sweet sleep. In fact, it's a charm. And it's going to, when they do go into the, the spirit realm, they're going to be doing the devil's bidding. So the Holy Spirit, God told Ezekiel, I'm against those pillows too. They will also use your face or image to appear in someone else's dream to manipulate them. If Holy Spirit uses men and women of God to release divine messages to you, then Satan, of course, will counterfeit that too. People don't think, well, you know, they were, where is that in the Bible? Listen, anything God did, Satan will try to counterfeit it. And if you don't recognize truth, you'll think that what's evil is good and what's good is evil. Um, there's a lot on that. So y'all go back and study these. Dreaming of being blocked. Dead end. Spirit of arrested development. Spirit of delay, spirit of setback. That's another symbol. If you're dreaming of delay all the time, now remember these symbols that I'm giving you, if you have one, one dream, one or two dreams, okay. But if you are constantly dreaming a variation of these symbols or all of one of these particular symbols, that is a clear indicator of um, some some sorcery being projected at you, at your life, at your purpose. Dreaming of being blocked. Um, if you are dreaming of being blocked in dreams, it can reflect witchcraft being sent to you. This is a spirit of delay or setback. Your dream of coming to a wall and no outlet. 
driving in a dead end. And again, this is frequent dreams of this happening. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but there are some of you who've had dreams where you've seen a wall and all of a sudden you was, you was, I think Sister Terry, girl, you had a good dream. She had a, a wall in her dream. And what you do, I, did you, you kicked it or you started punching it or something in the dream and she started breaking oh, the wall. Oh, I knocked again. it down. She knocked it down. Oh, Jesus. That's what you want to see because a wall means delay. And, and also a, a wall, if you're trying to get away from witchcraft and it's up, it means you can't get away. You can't escape. You're in a jar. That represents when, when there's a dead end in a dream, a witchcraft dream, it's in a spirit. Your spirit is in a jar and you can't get out. You're in a, you know, you, you, you're trapped. And so you can't move. But when you can knock it down, that means you, your spirit man has word in it and it has enough power. All you need is a mustard seed. If you got that faith, you can knock that ball down. You can get out of that trap. So all these symbols y'all read on because there's a, I gave you a lot of um, scriptures and examples on if you're dreaming these things. And if you read through it and have any questions, you want deliverance or whatever, um, reach out to me. We get rid of it. Remember, all these things can be renounced and, and sins can be forgiven. The only thing can't be forgiven is blasphemy. So don't call nothing evil good. And don't call nothing good evil if you don't know, because you could blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And that is unforgiven. Uh, another one is a reprobate mind. And some people say, well, how do I know I have a reprobate, reprobate mind? If you no longer have a conscience. <laughs> That's the only way. Only way I know how to put it. Um, you no longer, you, you have some people that just, they just don't care. You can't tell them nothing. They don't, they don't say sorry. They're not repetitive. They're not remorseful. None of that. Um, flying in the dream. We talked about dreaming of being blocked. We talked about dreaming of snakes. Uh, how many of y'all know, know what dreaming of snakes? Yeah. You think that's a good dream, bad dream, depending on the size, depending on the color, or just all snakes in general, just bad dreams? Come on, y'all. This is an interactive. I think I they think all bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. The first snake was the devil. Who said that? I did. <laughs> That's right. The very first book of all 66 books of this Bible encounters the devil as a serpent. That is because that is one of the first ways of, of recognizing sorcery dreams or witchcraft being projected at you. Satan will appear as a serpent. It may talk to you. It may be in different colors. It, now, depending on the size, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, Luke 10, 19 is a specific verse relating to a particular power against a specific principality. Animals in the Bible, in most cases, are symbolic. God was not referring to stepping and dancing on the head of a snake if we see one in the natural. Snakes and scorpions are symbolic of not just evil deities, but the highest ranking demons, the highest ranking uh, demonic powers in the spiritual realm. In Joel 2.25, some of y'all say Joel, I say Joel, tomato, tomato. God speaks to the prophet a promise. Oh, Jesus. He speaks to him a promise to return what the locust, the caterpillar, the canker worm, and palmer worm have eaten. These are just symbols. He's not talking about an actual worm, not talking about actual palmer worm, moth, canker worm. He's talking about spirits. And, and when you look at, when you have dreams of animals, please do not Google your dreams. First of all, let me just tell y'all that. Don't, don't, because most of the time what you're going to pull up is something that says .com, which is a commercial website. Anybody can post. Your six-year-old could have said, you know, this animal represent peace and prosperity. And you sitting around talking about what I read where it said that the dog represents peace and prosperity. No, 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 no. Um, and then you got these other interpretations that say, oh, the, this dream means that the angel number, ain't no angel numbers in the Bible. This is new age stuff. And you sitting here trying to get a spiritual interpretation on a demonic site. So what you need to do is what you can. Now I stopped, 
I kind of stopped using Google a little bit. Now that's just for me because the logo. And I started, and then I was having trouble too. I told y'all, God is so jealous. There are some of us who the Holy Spirit is so jealous of us. He just, he will not let you deal with certain things. And so like, if I'm watching a movie, he'll cause the audio to mess up. It'll freeze. And then me and my daughter, we'll be like, okay, Lord, we, we not watching that. We sorry. And we go watch something else and then play right. There are times where I was trying to work on my computer and Google always kept knocking me out. It kept telling me to re-log in. I'm, I'm getting tired of this. And so I started using my Windows for everything and it works fine. So I just kind of weaned off Googling things, but use whatever search um, app that you have, Safari, Wikipedia, whatever. And I don't care if you use Google or not, but what I need you to do is don't Google the dream context or the dream contents. Google the, the, the um, oh, help me, Holy Spirit, how you, how you say it. Um, Google the characteristics of the animal. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, y'all, we a team. Google the characteristics of the animal. So if you want, you dreamt about a snake, Google what snakes represent. They, they are pre predators. They're not prey, they're predators. And they're territorial. Um, you know, they, they they inject venom. So these things are, some of these things can be very poisonous. Um, so you have to be, when you dream about this animal, the characteristics of that animal is what the Holy Spirit is re reflecting to you. When you, when you dream about worms, ants, um, well, no, not so much ants, because ants can be a good dream. Again, it just, it just depends on the context of the dream. But when you dream worms, canker worms, these are depicted not, never good. These are, in fact, when you Google canker worm, um, palmer worm, and all caterpillar, these things are constantly munching. They're always chop, 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 chop. So this is a devouring spirit. If you got a canker worm spirit on your life, it's devouring everything. Just chop it, 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 chop it. And then it won't, it might appear small for a minute. And then the next day it's a huge big thing because you know, these things go into cocoons and come out something different. So if you're dealing with a canker worm, palmer worm, moth, all these agents, you're dealing with something that can shape shift. Ooh, Jesus. And so you'll never recognize or discern it for being one thing, but actually think it's multiple things harassing you when really it just took another form. Oh, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit just gave me that through revelation. When the Bible uses the illustration, study out their habits and ways. All these creatures have intense eating habits. These represents a type of spirit that constantly consumes and takes from its victim like a worm. Um, I'm going to go on to the next point because I got some more. I'm going to write a skip down. Um, dreaming of caskets. Dreaming of being in a casket. Dreaming you died. Graves. Dreaming you in a grave. You waking up in a dream in a grave in a cemetery. These dreams represent a spirit of death being projected at you. God says you should have life and have it more abundantly. There's no reason to be dreaming about a casket unless you are getting a prophetic vision of somebody about to pass away. But if you are dreaming about you in the casket, you at the funerals, people around you um, are attending your funeral, don't know. These dreams along with someone shooting at you, chasing you with knives are all symbolic to someone um, projecting a deaf spirit at you. This is a relentless sorcerer. All right, we talked about this, dreaming of eating in the dreams. That means you're coming in covenant with something. That's right, you shall live and not die, declare the works of the Lord. Returning to grade school, that's another one. Everybody dream about going to school. Now, it's one thing to dream you in a class or a classroom setting. That means you are, you are ever um, obtaining knowledge, wisdom. But if you are dreaming that you are in grade school and you, you know, you like 30, 40, 50, and you, in, you back in middle school, that is a spirit of setback, delay. Hallelujah, gee, that, that is something that is trying to keep you from progressing. Um, even if you're not 
seeing yourself in the in the grade school, but you're seeing classmates from grade school. Same thing. Same thing. Um, you haven't seen these people 20 plus years and all of a sudden you're dreaming about them. Why? Because it's a spirit of setback, delay, arrested development. <coughs> um, if you are constantly seeing yourself with past schoolmates or back in primary school, take a test, taking a test and failing or taking a test, but waking up before you can see the results. If you are back in your hometown, childhood community or wearing your previous school uniform, you're at your former school or you don't see yourself at the former school, but you see classmates from, the, from that school in the dream. These dreams represent setback or delay. I had dreams like this. In one dream, I was running away and ahead of, I was running away, but I was ahead of some people. And these people I recognize from, um, you know, my childhood, my teenage years. And I haven't seen none of these people um, in years, almost 10 years. And I was trying to run ahead of them so that they did not catch up to me. And so God was just letting me know, hey, this spirit of your old or of your past is not that far behind you. So now um, <laughs> Holy Spirit can be like a comedic sometimes. He has this comedic spirit where he'll say something and he means it, but he makes you laugh in the, in the mannerism that he used. And so um, I don't like turtle Christians. <laughs> I, you, when you've been saved all these years and you still moving like a little turtle, turtle Christians, when when you got them devils on your back, you better <laughs> run and not think. <laughs> you better go, go, go. Because if you keep going too slow, they'll catch up to you. So in the dream, I saw people from my teenage years, but I was ahead of them. But the fact that that, that I could see them behind me meant I needed to go further. I needed, to, I needed to be a whole lot further along than where I was. So God will warn us. He'll tell us, because if he don't, Satan will catch up to you. And he does not desire that. How many of y'all are aware of this symbol? Um, when you step out of your house and you're doing all of this and there wasn't nothing there, you thinking it's a spider web, but you looking around, you don't see it. Or you walk out the door with somebody else and they looking at you like, well, what is it? You like, you ain't, you don't feel that. And they're like, no, that's because it wasn't projected at them. It was projected at you. Um, you get out of the car and all of a sudden you, and you looking around, but you don't see nothing. Hallelujah. That's a, another symbol. Spiderwebs, if you have ever had the experience, both natural or in a dream, where you got out of a car or stepped outside and suddenly felt you walked into a spider web, but did not physically see it. You, you, you didn't see a cobweb, but you're swatting at the sky, trying to figure out where this web came from because you did not see it. Oh, Jesus. Um, so now you feel, uh, you know, you start thinking that you're crazy. You start thinking that, you know, because that is a spirit of going out of your mind. It's, it's supposed to cause confusion. It's supposed to make you, you know, you're doing all this. You're having a reaction to something that's not there. So people who have who deal with these webs, cobwebs, spiders, you start soon after that because you just brush it off. You're just like, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. All of a sudden, now, days later, even weeks later, um, you're getting offended and having a reaction to things that really was not meant to be reacted to. Um, that was a spirit projected at you and it was successful. You getting offended by everything, you reacting to other people's, why are you including yourself in their stuff? That don't have nothing to do with you. You getting mad about something that's not none of your business. Um, you can see a natural web Oh, because you did not see it. Usually you can see a natural web, which we can. We can see webs and we, we know to go around it because you see the little silver. It'll blow in the wind. You'll go around it. So that's in the normal, you know, in the natural. But in the spirit, um, you cannot see this web. You can you can see a natural web, but witchcraft or sorcery being projected at you um, is only on you. So you're the only one that feel it. The people with you will be like, I don't know what you swat. That ain't no spider web. Ain't nothing there. 
Um, they will not feel it and no one else around you will be able to see it. What you felt is a spiritual web of blockages that the sorcerer has on your life. People who have had this experience will report that they literally felt something on them, but it was spiritual. There was nothing there. No one can experience it but you. So now you will start dreaming of spiders. Mm -hmm. You ever, y'all ever notice how when there's a bug, all of a sudden now you itchy? It's the same thing. Now all of a sudden you dreaming of spiders. Now all of a sudden you dreaming of bats and crocodiles, snakes. Most of these creatures that you will dream about are forbidden creatures in the Old Testament. And all of these symbols denote witchcraft. Isaiah 59 tells us the wicked have vipers and weave spider webs. And if you eat it, it gets, meaning it gets in your mouth and you don't renounce it, the person can die. That's scripture. That's Isaiah 59. Um, they hatch vipers, eggs, and weave the spider's webs. He who eats of their eggs dies. And from an egg which is crushed, a viper breaks out. So you step on it and you're moving and you're doing all this hitting it. All you're doing is making a viper break out of it, a demon. Woo. Their works are works of wickedness, of sin, of injustice, of wrongdoing, and the act of violence is in their hands. Isaiah 59, 5 and 6. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know about the, the vipers and the webs? Y'all still with me? I'm going to try to. I didn't know that. <laughs> me either. I didn't know that either. Um, it's good stuff, right? Um, Y'all go y'all go back on your own and study out mountains and hills. Usually mountains and hills can have meanings either way. If you're seeing mountains and hills, it can be a good dream or a bad dream. Um, and just really quickly, when you dream of hills and mountains, or if you dream climbing a mountain or ascending, going up, when you dream that you almost get to a certain point, then you got to start all over again. That's another sign of witchcraft attack. It is to be um, excited about a pro, you know, you're excited about a project and over time you lose every piece of desire for it. You ever start something and then stop, start something and then stop, start something and you never finish. That's another spirit of arrested delay, arrested development delay. Um, Months later, you desire something new, then boom, the zeal suddenly leaves, leaves you. It's a spirit of you want to do, but you lose the desire. Um, I had a dream recently where the Holy Spirit was my father in a dream, and he told me that I was a CEO and that I could not be lazy. He was giving me prophetic instruction, and he was giving me um, strategy as to how to get my stuff done. I managed to birth five books because the Lord told me not to be lazy. So that meant I was ready for a spirit to come and cause me to start my book and not finish. Cause me to start my projects and not finish. Cause me to start studying a lesson and not finish. I was already prepared. So when you dream of mountains, um, hills, all that stuff, it just depends on the dream. It depends on the context. If you are going up and you can't finish going up, if you get stuck and you start and you're going around in circles, remember th that was judgment on the Israelites. Those that was 40 years and older um, died because they were going around the mountain and the ones 40 and younger got to go through. Um, let's see. Psalms 37 and five, Proverbs 16 and three. I can, let me see. He says that you, Holy Spirit will give you strength by inviting him in the plans. That way, you know, they are established. Whatever you're going to do for God, he has to be invited. He has to be a part of it. It's for him. Because when your plans are established, he will, um, you know, in all your ways, your plans, he will, he will execute them for you. He will establish them for you. Remember, everything established by God, Satan attempts to counterfeit. That's why it's imperative to discern truth. You must know truth. Now we're going to get into some a, a few interpretations. I was saving this for last. Last time I did interpretations at the beginning, but I'm saving this for last because I thought what better way to close out the lesson than interpreting some dreams. So we're going to listen to, I don't know, a couple and just see um, 
what we think. But this, this next segment is gonna be about dreaming of houses. Okay, so when you dream of houses, it could be a good or bad dream because your house and your car represent your life. Your, if you're not saved, you're not a Christian, it represents, I mean, if you are a Christian, if you are saved, it can represent your mantle, your ministry. If you are not saved, it can represent your lifestyle. Um, I found this video. It's hard to find really good Bible-based interpreters and people that interpret good. Uh, it just be so much erroneous teaching. And we got to be very careful who we send in our dreams to. We got to be very careful who we listening to for interpretation. It's some of these people that y'all listen to that other people with gift of discerning of spirits are dreaming about these leaders being wicked and you sitting there connected to these ministries. I'm gonna tell you, I was connected to John Eckhart ministry. Some of y'all know, I think that's how I met some of y'all through through there. And then right after I, I signed up and was, you know, I was excited. I had this, this dream about him. And then I started having other people come to me for interpretation with dreams about him or people affiliated with him, you know, Brian Lestrange, um, What's some of them other ones that's connected to him? Matthew Stevenson. And so I was like, oh my God, it must be something. It got to be something here. But I found this guy and I, I, he bears witness. He bears witness with what he says. But listen to this. Okay, I'm back. Uh, just wanted to give you a couple more tips. Uh, on the website, man, we just had hundreds and hundreds of dreams and we can't do them all i wish we could but uh don't lose any sleep over it you know just really seek the lord on that and he knows when you need it right so uh one of the things that i saw kind of a theme uh on facebook was houses and what does houses represent god could be giving you a dream about a house and it could be speaking about your life where you live right your house is where you live and God is speaking to you about things going on in your life, but simultaneously, it could be speaking about the things that are going on in your church. Because again, the church is your house too. It's where you live spiritually. And so the dream could mean your church, the dream could mean where you live, or the dream could mean both. God is saying the same thing in both places. And so when you're looking at the dream and you're looking at to interpret the dream, Oops. dream you have to be able to say okay what's going on in my life and so like this particular dream that this lady had i've had a reoccurring dream that there are hidden rooms in my house that are filled with treasures rooms that i did not know where they were that's from tammy interesting dream and yet a powerful dream that's okay anybody ever had dreams like this where you had hidden compartments hidden rooms room in a room <laughs> Before we go any further with his interpretation, yes. What what? Tell us yes. a bit of your uh, experience with that. Was it a good dream or bad dream? Mine was a good dream. So you, what did you see? Um, when I went, basically, when I went into the room, um, I didn't know the room was there, but it was a house, and I didn't know who else it was, and I went, I peeked under. And I seen like another room inside a room. And when I got into the room, there was clothes on the bed, but they were bloody. And it was clothes and it was like blood like everywhere around me. Mm -hmm. And so I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, these clothes need to be washed. So I walked back and it was a group of people just standing there. I didn't know who these people were. And I seen a big white tub. And I said, and I walked right in. And I dipped the clothes and I washed the clothes and I looked down at my hands and it had blood on it as well. And I said, oh, I need to wash my hands. But I said, you know what? I'm going to wash my whole body. So I took my clothes off and I got into the tub and I washed my body. And when I lift up my hands and say, thank you, God, um, the water parted like the Red Sea. <laughs> and <laughs> and when I looked like above me, it said overcomer, and I seen like angel wings, and like people were standing around, like all. Oh. oh wow, that is a very good dream. A room in a room. 
See, you know, you you know what you need to have an experience like that. You gotta have that Moses. You gotta have that Moses <laughs> characteristic because Moses. You got to think about it. He was talking to God from a burning bush. And the Bible said he wanted to come see. So you think about it in a dream. You see a room in a room. You got to have that almost curiosity, but not curiosity. You got to have that um, that that inkling, that unction to go see. And if you do go, you'll have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So that was really good. She got clean. She got washed, um, delivered, and angels were rejoicing. The Bible actually says that when one comes, to, when one, one of these little ones come to Christ, that angels in heaven rejoice. And I heard singing too. Yeah. I did hear singing. That's the one I sent you. I recently sent you. And I heard singing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure did. Who else had a dream with a room in a room? I've had a room. I did. Room. You did? Yes, that's a good dream. Was it a good dream or a bad dream? Mine was um a deliverance. Okay. That's a good dream. Deliverance is always good. <laughs> yeah. You said deliverance. Like it, was like it was like it was a cuss word. No, that's a good dream. <laughs> well, I was trying to decide whether or not that was considered a good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Deliverance is excellent. I take a deliverance dream over over a warning dream any day. Uh oh. But let's see his deter his, his um interpretation. So what God is basically speaking to you is about your life. There's areas of your life that have, you have yet to discover. And God's saying that there's treasures in that. Perfect example would be like for me, having this dream 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. I could have that dream and God said, there's areas in your life that you don't even know about. It's like today, I'm writing a book called Dreams, Children in the Night Season. It's really designed for parenting and helping parents with their children but that dream could have been easily for me saying i didn't know i had that in me 10 years ago writing a book that's a treasure the reason why he's giving you the dream is because he's saying you're about to start discovering it god's saying there's so much more about your your life that you have yet to discover and as you're on this journey and on this path that god will open up those things to you and make you aware of them this other lady, she had a dream that I thought was very interesting about a house too. Let me get there. She says, I keep having the same recurring dream that I'm living back in my old house. It's a familiar place, but a different location. So what is God saying to her about going back to living at her old house? It was a Anybody had dreams, you in your old house, childhood home? Yes. <laughs> Childhood home. What does that? What does a dream like this represent? Anybody know? When you dream of your past, it means backwards, going back. Same thing like backyard, back door. Anything back is you're going backwards. Um, and that, the interpretation he's going to give, I agree with too. But when you, whenever you dream of your um, childhood home, you need to pray about it because it might have to be something you've renounced because it can be a familiar spirit, something from something that you've already overcome is trying to cause you to relive again. And you're like, no, I gotta go through that again. I already done, mm -mm. I ain't doing that. Um, sometimes dreaming of ba being back in your childhood home can mean there are some emotions that happen to you from that home that are trying to, uh, manifest in you again and so God will show you hey look you remember what I delivered you from you're about to go back into that same habit that same um, sin and so dreaming of your childhood home is usually never a good dream because it's in the past then he said behold I make all things new a place of comfort for her it was a place of rest it's almost like God saying that you need to get back to this place of where you felt comfort and where you can felt peace. Now, the other issue about a house going back and living at a, your old house when you were as a kid and feeling uncomfortable, it could mean that God says that you're picking up issues, right? When you were a child, maybe of rebellion, uh, maybe of pain, 
And God's saying, you're going back and living at that place, and I don't want you to go back there. So again, you have to look at context of the dream will tell you what the house represents. And so I just wanted to give you some tips about what a house could symbolize. It could symbolize what's going on in you. It could symbolize what's going on in your church. Look at it. Go after the Lord. Pray through it. But that will help you out when you have a dream about a house. Amen. I agree with that. Um, remember, I was just telling about dreaming of backyards, even basements. Can Basement means, if you're dreaming about being in a basement, it means hidden. God is revealing to you something that is hidden. You get ready to get privy of something that, want, that wanted to stay hidden from you. Um, it could be ancestral stuff. It could be generational stuff. It could be secrets. This, but it, it's you, basement usually represents, because when you, you think about a basement in the natural is a place where you normally um, keep luggage, baggage, keep things that you don't want cluttering in the house. It's a place where people tend to hoard. Um, it's a place for creepy crawlers, creepy critters in the night, you know, it's dark. It tends to be a place that children are scared of. There are, there are a lot of, it's breeding ground for a lot of different demons. So dreaming of backyard, backyard again means contained, confined. Um, I had a dream where I had twins, I had a boy and a girl. And the boy baby I kept, and the, the girl baby my, my, at the time, apostle took. And the babies grew quick. They were like, they, had, they were spiritual babies because they grew really, really fast. From the, they were, the minute I had them, they were premature. But the minute, by the time we were holding each one, they were like toddlers. And by the time we got outside, they were running. So that they took three different manifestations very quickly. But the, no, I'm sorry, I had the girl, which baby did I have? I had the boy. I had the boy baby, he had the girl baby. The boy baby, the Lord let me look and I seen him running through green grass, through fields, he was running free. But when I looked over to my left, the girl twin was in a pit, like in a, um, like a dog kennel or something. And she was confined in this backyard and there was a dog chasing her. And so when I woke up out of that dream, I said, I got to get out of this ministry. I can't, I said, I got too many spiritual gifts and I cannot birth them here. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> like, you're not about to get not a man, one of my stuff have and have dogs chasing it. Get out your mind. But yeah, dreams like that, God will give you to warn you about the places and the people that are around you so that you don't deliver. You might have to tarry until you get to a um, safe place. But these dreams sometimes are to show you the back. The back is an act of secrecy on the person's part who wishes to remain secret or anonymous. When you dream about somebody and you can't see the front of them, but you can see the back of them. Y'all remember uh, there was a dream I had where the demon came out of the bathroom. Um, and I couldn't see the front of them, but I could only see the back of them. But I knew, I said, what is a man doing in the women's bathroom? Um, so when you see the back of something because it wants to stay hidden, I, I, pres I presumed it to be a spirit of perversion by way of a child molester. And so, um, yeah, that was that. Dreaming of a strange or familiar house. Same thing. If you dream of a strange house, it represents, um, a, you know, a, going into a new place, a new arena, a new, a new adventure. God's getting ready to have you with a new assignment. Familiar houses, familiar spirit. Pay attention to what the house represents. Pay attention to the people there. It's, it's, it's like it wasn't your house. You didn't grow up there, but it was familiar to you. This is take. This is trying to get a familiar spirit to latch on to you, to 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 gain access to you. Um, unknown destination. When you have dreams where you don't even know where you're going, you're just walking. Uh, again, that's you know sorcery, witchcraft, because somebody, something is compelling you to go into a place to do a thing. And you don't even have, you don't even know why you do it. You don't even know, Lord, why I go there? Why did I go to that house? Why did I sit down at that table? Why did I eat with those strangers? Um, Lord, I, you know, forgive me. I renounce doing that. Make me stronger. My spirit is weak. 
Remember the scripture in Proverbs says that your strength is weak. You have no strength. Um, these are colors. But before we get into colors, I want to, um, I want y'all to, I'm going to give you a couple more dreams that I want y'all to interpret. So give me a second. Can y'all see my screen? Colors, yes. Colors. You see colors? Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is good so far. <laughs> Time is moving. Don't worry, I'm almost done. Okay. Okay, we're going to interpret some dreams. And then if you guys have a dream, um, yeah, we're all, we're about done, um, Sister Doan. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna do like maybe two more dreams. And then if you, anyone has a dream that has been bothering you, or um, you know, um something that you just need some help with, some clarity, then we're going to interpret those as well. All right, can y'all see my screen? I don't know what happened to my stuff. Yes. Be a really great resource for you guys. Okay, so let's take a look. We have, uh, we've got a couple, it looks like a couple people have already put, um, put some dreams in here. So I'm, I was just looking at comments and got distracted and stopped talking. <laughs> That's why I need to actually look. Let, let's see this here, Janelle. So Janelle wrote down a dream. I had a dream that I was diagnosed by a doctor. I won't be able to get pregnant unless I try for two times. Anybody got an idea what that, what, if someone wrote that dream to you, what would you think? Anybody got an idea? If someone says oh, they pregnancy dreams are usually good. Which crowd? I won't be able to get pregnant unless I will try for two times. Two times. Anybody else think it's witchcraft? Um, yes. Let's hear his interpretation. Some of his, I, I chose this guy because some of his interpretations are so erroneous. I don't even know. I don't know who this man is, but listen to what he says about this one. So what would that mean? The idea of being pregnant is that God's birthing something in you. Now, that could be a ministry. That could be a, an invention. It, it could be... Um, it could be a book <laughs> like that. That would be something you'd be pregnant with. It's something that God is birthing in you that you're going to be bringing forth into the world, but you're not going to be able to just do it on your first try. It's actually going to re require some persistence for you to be able to birth what God has for you. So don't give up. Keep on trying because there is something God is going to be releasing through you. And if you give up after the first time, you won't be able to see it. But in persistence, you got to try at least two times. In persistence, you'll see it come forth. So that is fun. <laughs> what did y'all think about that interpretation? 
<clears throat> I actually agree with it. No. No? Yeah, you can have, because look what her dream was. She said she was diagnosed by a doctor who said she could not get pregnant unless she tried two times. So um, if it was witchcraft, she wouldn't be able to get pregnant at all, no matter how much she tried. But because she had to do some persevering, um, she would be able to be pregnant. So that bear witness with me. Um, but again, that would have to bear witness with the dreamer. If they felt like they were being held back, held up, hindered, stumbled, you know, a stumbling block in any way of getting pregnant, uh, or if God has previously shown them dreams that saying, you know, opposite, then I would not have uh, ac accepted that dream. But if it lined up with some other stuff that I have been seeing, then yeah, because, you know, sometimes we do give up when we don't see things our way right away. And so God has said, no, don't give up. Um, I actually had the same word given to me. I had a prophetic word given to me a few years back. They told me that by my I can't remember what number book, but um, I had I have to write so many books before I actually become a millionaire. And so at the time, I was only on like book number one. And so I was like, whew, I got a lot more to do. <laughs> so, yeah, um, he ha there's another dream he has in here about Ryan Lestrange that I want to get to. Oh, right. This Let's next see. one and then the one We've with Ryan got Lestrange. Tia Perry. T Tia Perry. So you wrote, I was in my backyard and it was a sunny pouring rain day. So sun's out, but the rain is pouring. My mom and I were taking out the trash. I looked and my neighbor's trash can was ever was over seven feet high, very big. And it was on my side of the yard. Oh, hey. <laughs> now this one, what y'all think about this? She, remember, we just talked about backyards. She was in her backyard. It was sunny, but it was rainy. Sunny, but rainy. It's, so it's two different weathers, two different things going on. My mom and I were taking out the trash. I looked in my neighbor's trash can was over seven feet tall, and it was on my side of the yard. This is this this dream got a lot of symbols. You got trash, you got backyard, you got the yard, you got a seven foot, a very a very clear and precise number seven, um, and seven numbers are in your in your study guides too. But does anyone interpretation stand out to them? Let's see what let's see what he says. So backyard often talks about you know things from the past, but. Here's one of those uh, one of those principles that you want to pay attention to. In this particular setting, what you're doing is taking the trash out. And so the question that you've got to ask is when you take the trash out, do you normally take it out to the backyard? And it seems like the way that you've described this, if you normally took it out the front yard and you're taking it out to the backyard, you would have said something. So this is just the normal way of taking the trash out. So in this dream, the backyard's not necessarily talking about something from the past. It's just, this is how you would normally take your trash out. Now, thinking about trash. Trash is something that you're getting rid of. You don't need anymore. Maybe it's dirty. Maybe it just needs to get removed. It needs to be taken away. It can talk about issues that we have. It can talk about uh, things that are um, are unhelpful that we just need to be removed from our lives. So, pause. Do y'all know what a neighbor represents in the dream? It doesn't necessarily have to mean your actual neighbor. Um, though you may see your neighbor, it's it may not actually be talking about your neighbor. When you dream about a neighbor, what does what when we go to church what do they say they said turn to your neighbor look to your neighbor your neighbor is somebody in that's supposed to be in christ and so if you may this person may have a friend that's in christ that has some 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 garbage that not only that they have on in their house but it's spilling over into their house too and it's being hidden because remember backyard means it's something that you don't really want people to know about so his dream his interpretation is is borderline is not really deep enough it's not he's not really what y'all think can y'all can y'all hear me hmm 
We can hear you. Oh, what what y'all think about the the neighbor in the back the backyard? It's some stuff that's that wasn't necessarily hers, but because of affiliation, she's associated. Can y'all see how? Can you see how that is? Oh, let's see. We all have trash that needs to be taken out periodically. Um, this is taking out the trash and it's you and your mom. So this is not just your individual stuff. This is about stuff in your family that you're dealing with, but what you're noticing in trying to deal with your stuff and the stuff in the family is those people that are closest to you. Now your neighbor could be talking about your actual neighbor or it could be using neighbor in the sense that Jesus used the word neighbor, the people that are in your life, people that are close to you. They say, well, who's my neighbor? Well, it's the one that you're in front of, the one that's in front of you that needs help. That's your neighbor. So this, this person, uh, while you've got just normal stuff to deal with, this person, they've got a lot of stuff to deal with, seven. <laughs> it, it's just they're, they're, they've got a lot of issues that they are dealing with and their issues, their trash is encroaching on your yard. And so it's affecting your life, your family's life. So what this stream is saying is while, while you're trying to deal with your issues, you're realizing how much other people's issues are actually creating problems and, and encroaching, violating boundaries in 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 your life yeah. and your family's life i agree with those two dreams so okay so now listen here's some to this fun. one saw some comments earlier about the number 12 so we'll, we'll get to talk a little bit about the number 12 elevator usually talks about an increase or oh, a wait, decrease in anointing I wrote this i dreamt that i went on an elevator and the elevator operator is apostle ryan lestrange I told him I wanted to go to the fifth floor, but he stopped at the 12th floor and I woke up. Okay, so here's some fun. I saw some comments earlier about the number 12. So we'll, we'll get to talk a little bit about the number 12. Elevator usually talk. All right, hold up. Anybody got any insight that's screaming at them about this dream? I've dreamed I went on the elevator and the elevator operator is Apostle Ryan Lestrange. I told him I wanted to go to the fifth floor, but he stopped at the 12th floor and I woke up. So, okay, listen to the interpretation and then y'all tell me. Think about it. Talks about an increase or a decrease in anointing. So you're going up, that's an increase. So there, there's something you're going up to another level another spiritual level, and you, you don't have the specific building. So if you had a specific building, let's say it was an apartment building, it might be talking about uh, your life. It might be talking about social life, how you're living in community, could be talking about your church, but this is more just talking about mm -hmm. spiritual life because it's not really about the building. It's just about the elevator. And you have Apostle Ryan Lestrange. So Here's somebody that is known for walking and anointing. He's known for prophetic gifting. He's a recognition uh, of those dynamics that are going on. And, and this person or this prophetic gifting is, is taking you someplace that you didn't expect. You know that you need to increase in grace on your life. That's number five. Five often represents grace because that he gave grace according to the gifts that he gave, or gave us gifts according to the grace that he gave us, Ephesians chapter four. And then he lists out five gifts. Now you could separate them into four gifts, but we often, most often. Pause. <laughs> Come on, y'all talk to me. My spirit is about to leap. What's going on in this dream and what's going on with this interpretation? Anybody, somebody, want somebody? <laughs> what y'all think? Y'all don't know? I mean, think about it. Look at it. It's in plain sight. 
the elevator operator is in rebellion. This is your job. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take people where they need to go, where they're supposed to go. And yet you taking them to someplace else. You taking them to where you think they're supposed to go. This man ain't supposed to be on the... And these two numbers are symbolic. Five and 12 are two very prominent numbers. 12 represents the apostolic, divine order, all that stuff. Five, um, it, you know, like he said, was grace. Y'all look in your, um, your, your manuals on five. There are so many, so much on the number five, but oh my goodness. You know, he is, he knows where he's supposed to go. You can't tell me I belong in the apostolic when I know I belong here. So this is a leader that is putting people in leadership positions that they are not called to go there. This is a rebellious person. And I'm and I'm not just saying it. I don't know Apostle Ryan is strange, but I've interpreted many dreams where people are seeing him and it's always confusion. It's always some chaotic. It's every his fruit. His spirit bears the same fruit of false. And he is also a spiritual son of John Eckhart. And I told y'all about him. I dreamt about him cussing. And, and then he lied about it too. I said, what you say? He said, I ain't say nothing. I said, and you lie? I was like, oh no, I ain't sewing any of you no more. My money ain't going in the right place. My money going in, <laughs> in a curse. <laughs> like, yeah, do y'all see this? This late. She said, um, I, I went on an elevator and the elevator operator. You are the operator. That's your job. That's what you do. How dare you tell me that I belong on the 12th floor when I told you take me to number five? No, no, no. Um, and then I told, I told him I wanted to go to the fifth floor, but he stopped. That means you went past where I was supposed to go. You blatantly went where you wanted to take me. You got to be careful with these leaders. When you start dreaming of leaders, you better be careful and make sure you make sure God say it's quite a few of them that I used to follow last year. I, I told you I followed Eckhart last year. And just as quickly as I started following him, I had to unfollow. And I started seeing some monitoring stuff too. I ain't going, I ain't got time to go into it, but when my eyes got open, I began to see some stuff. And I, you know, once I see it, I can't unsee it. Y'all see my shirt. It says I can see even in the dark. I made this shirt. <laughs> Because I see good, mm -mm. but yeah, I want I wanted to give y'all that because um, it's important that we know. Listen, we don't know none of these people, you know, um, media, social media leaders, televangelists. We don't know their personal lifestyle, but you best believe if you dream and you go to sleep and you minding your business, and you dream about one of these people. And you know you watch them, you sewing into them, you 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 fellowshipping with them, and all that good stuff. Um, you need to take heed because God is telling you, I'm not blessing your seed, and I and I don't and I don't want you being confused, listening to this person, watching this person, and they are not in right standing. They're not in right standing. Um, so yeah, if you dream about Ryan Lestrange, you dreaming about Matthew Stevenson, you dreaming about Eckhart. Please take that before God because he is not telling you that just to be telling you. He's tell and then some of these other big names too. You know, I seen, I know what I saw. <laughs> and um, I didn't like it. He, you know, in my dream, he came to my house. That means that when somebody comes to your house, that means agreement, covenant. And, I, and he said, I'm here for your son. And I'm like, why you want my son? My son don't even follow you. I do. Why are you not here for me? But he was here for my son. And this is another consistency that I'm seeing in people's dreams when they dream about, you know, people that's his spiritual children. They're dreaming, um, like there was a lady in Atlanta, Georgia, who sent me her dream of Ryan Lestrange and Matthew Stevenson. Both of them was in both her, two of her, two, three, two out of three of her dreams. And both men was trying to change the appearance of her son. They was trying to change his haircut. They was trying to change the style of his clothes. And in the dream, she remembers she did not like it. She was like, what, you know, why, what happened to my son? Why does he look like he looked? It's a deceptive spirit 
to put on the image of this spirit and not on God. And so in my dream, when he, he cussed, he said, I'm here for your son. And I said, okay, wait in the living room. I go get him. When I was on my way to go get him, I heard John Eckhart in my dream cuss. And I came back and I said, what you say? And he said, oh, I didn't say anything. I said, and you like, <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I said, when I woke up, I, me and Holy Spirit had to have a serious conversation because, you know, I, like I said, I had, was watching his ministry. So um, with that being said, I really pray that you all um, understand some of these dream symbols. And, and while I had to skip over some of them, because we've already been on here since six o'clock, <laughs> and some of you are in different time zones, it's probably late, it's probably early, um, and you got to go. Those, if, if you have to go, you got your study guide. And remember, it's being recorded. You can come back and watch it. Um, but for the last or latter part of this teaching, I want to go over a few colors and a couple numbers. Um, so if you're dreaming of colors, um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what some of these colors represent. Colors have meaning both biblical and a cultural meaning. They usually have a positive or a negative meaning depending on the context. So sometimes you may dream of wearing cultural clothing, ancestral clothing. Um, you, may wear, you may see yourself wearing tribal prints. It just, depending on the dream and the colors that you're wearing could, could show that you may have an assignment to cover what, so what I would do if I had that dream, I would look up flags, find out who those, who, who, who wears those flags, who represents these colors and begin asking Holy Spirit, am I to cover this nation? Am I to cover this land? Am I to cover this people? Especially if you yourself was wearing it um, or you was around people. Um, I want to talk, I'm not going to go into all the colors because again, they're in your study guide, but I do want to talk about the color red because it, it happens to be a very familiar color in our dreams. Um, if you're dreaming of the color red, you're seeing red. And again, there are different shades. You got scarlet, you got crimson, you got all these different shades. But in the dream, you you know that it was red. Um, the, depending on the context of the dream can represent passion, or rage, rage, anger. Colors are very important in the dream. Okay, by Sister Joanne, she has to go. She said it's 2.25 in the morning in um, the UK where she is. So we thank you for coming on. We thank you for staying up this late with us. <laughs> we appreciate you. We, we're gonna cover you and pray for you um, against sabotaging spirits and retaliatory spirits as you have gained some insight on tonight, this morning, that your sleep be restful, be peaceful, and unbothered. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so dreaming of the number red. Um, matter of fact, when you dr dreams with dark, bold colors could be revealing the powers of darkness. Dreams of vivid green grass and blue skies can be an increase in spiritual insight. When colors are highlighted in your dreams, you have to, you, you have a, a service, an obligation to research. Okay, Lord, you kept showing me this color in my dream. Me, when I was in a season of starting ministry and coming out of one ministry, I had a lot of dreams with the color green. Everything was green. The paper, even the paper that my pastor wrote on about me was green. And so the, I, I found out that green is a prophetic color of go. It means you have, you have a green light to go forth. It is time for you to, to prophetically move. And you're, when you move prophetically, it's not a regular green. This green means you're going to move quick. It's going to be a fast, vast, and um, quick, speedily um, deliverance, recovery, moving, whatever the case may be, you're going to do it quickly. It's going to be done swift. But red, depending on the context of the dream, can represent rage, anger, or passion. It can reveal God's mighty splendor or majesty. Isaiah 63, 
one through three, can also represent war. Revelation six and four also represent war. Um, also, of course, the, the obvious, it can represent the blood of Jesus, depending on the context of the dream. Most of the time when we dream, we're not typically seeing the blood of Jesus. We're seeing some type of witchcraft attack where blood is being slain or they're wanting, they're wanting our blood or they're wanting you to, um, in the dream, have a miscarriage or an abortion so that that, that slain blood can be used to create spirit, spirit, spirit babies. Um, but there are times where we will have prophetic dreams. We see a lot of demonic and witchcraft dreams because the Bible talks more of hell than it does of heaven. God wants us to know that there is a bigger issue than trying to get to heaven. You, Our bigger issue is, is trying to defeat the, the powers of darkness, the kingdoms of darkness, because they are the God of this world. Satan is the father of this world. So, it, you know, that's why he said, wide is the way. You know, why, why does the path, but narrow is the way because when to get to heaven, it's, it's, it's narrow and not too many are going to find it, but why vast is the evils around us. So he makes it clear and he lets us know, you know, more about principalities and powers than he does about angels in heaven. Um, Isaiah 118 says, sin as scarlet or red as <clears throat> crimson. Now, like I said, there are more numbers in here, but just for the sake of time, because I want to wrap up. Um, blue is one of my favorite, blue is my favorite color, not one of, but it is my favorite color because it represents the divine. Everywhere in scripture where you see blue, it's, it's skies heaven the glory of god the presence of god and so it's one of the things that i like in fact in your in your book where it's your study guide where it says blue it, aside from being my favorite prophetic color it is a divine color of the holy spirit when you dream of blue that is holy spirit oh my gosh and it's a usually that's a very beautiful dream um, Holy Spirit himself, the divine, has encountered with you. Um, there are many scriptures about the blue dyes and the priest robes. Moses, Aaron, two of Aaron's sons and the 70 elders of Israel went up Mount Sinai to worship God before he gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments in stone. That's Exodus 24. The Bible states that they not only saw God, but also noticed that under his feet, was some sort of pavement made of sapphire. That is the glory of God. He was standing on the blue pavement of sapphire. And so when you dream of blue, my God, that is a divine, that is an awesome dream. Um, now dreaming numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm a big dreamer. So I dream numbers, colors, shapes, all kinds of stuff. But one of the numbers that I always tend to see in my dreams is um, five, for um, in the natural, I see 9-11. That, I realized that that was my prayer watch. So when you keep saying up time, it's more than likely your prayer time. That's the time God wants you to watch. That's the time God wakes you up. That's the time every time you look at the clock, seem like it's always that particular time. Okay. Um, I went too far ahead. Uh, let me see what number, any number, anybody got a particular number that they want to know about? Let somebody pick one. Uh, or is everybody good? Four. Number four. Um, I like, I love number four. There's a lot of different scriptures in number four, but remember in Genesis on the fourth day, he uh, four means creation. Number four means creation. This number directly relates to the creative ability of God. When you start seeing fours, it means God wants you to create. There's something in you that you need to do that you have not done. And so when you see the number four, God is reminding you of creation. He's reminding you that you were created to create more things, to, to, sub, to, you know, to subdue the land, to, to increase it. During the creation week, God finished the creation of what is termed the material universe on the fourth day. So the blueprint for the earth was done in four days. 
On that day, he made the stars, the moon, and the sun. Oh, Jesus. These three things were created to give light to the world and to divide the days. Number four, spiritually holds huge significance in the spiritual realm. While we cannot see God physically, he has provided us with certain witnesses that will prove to the people that he exists. When you usually, if you see the number four in people, this is a cloud of witnesses, rather good heavenly witnesses or demonic witnesses. When you see four, it, it, it represents there are witnesses. Remember, Satan is a witness against us. He, he is an accuser of the brethren. So he, when he go before God regarding stuff we've done, he not lying. We did that because he cannot lie before God. He, God is all knowing. So he cannot come to God and lie and say, we did something and we did not do it. When he come to God, it's because he's telling the truth. Because for one, remember in the book, what's in your arsenal? I told you, Satan will convince you to sin and then record you sinning. And then he'll use it against you. That's what he does. He'll convince you to do this thing. You do it. And then he'll go tell. He, next thing you know, you see him at the gates with trying to join in the meeting with, with the angels and, and the Holy Spirit and telling him, have you considered such and such? Because such and such, like he did jo Joshua and Zechariah. The Bible says he, Satan stood to accuse Joshua, the high priest. Joshua clothes was filthy. He did it. Whatever he done, the high priest did it, and, the, and Satan was trying to accuse him, make an accusation, and um, the Lord gave him a, another chance because he must have had a repentant heart. He said, "Take him, rem take his remnants off, put on, put, put, wash him, put on clean remnants." And then he asked Zechariah, "You know what should we do?" And Ze like I said, the revelation came to me that Zechariah prayed that they put a, a crown on him. Now, depending on who you got praying for you, when you in sin, can really make or break you. Because if you got somebody petitioning the Lord for you, like Moses did for Miriam, talking about putting her mouth on him, like Zechariah did for Joshua, um, like, like Abraham did for Lot, like Moses did for the people, you, you might not get grace if you got somebody praying to their deity, their God about you, and you don't have a praying partner who's praying to God. That's why, I, you know, I have to be careful who pray over me, pray for me, who I share stuff with, because I don't want the wrong person. Now, that's another warfare. I got I to deal with the warfare I'm in, what I asked prayer for in the first place, and the warfare of telling the wrong person. That's too much. Um, each of the four living creatures, remember Ezekiel, y'all, uh, he saw a wheel within a wheel. And in Revelation, in the book of Ezekiel, these living creatures transported a throne that had four wheels and four sides. Each of the four living creatures had four faces. So when you see the number four, depending on the context of the dream, can represent something that has many faces. Again, like the like the can of, um, the canker worm and the palmer worm, something that can transform, metamorph into something else. This is something that can translate into four different things. Um, in the book of Revelation, the four living creatures are described a bit differently. They also um, have four faces, but with six wings. They had the face of a lion, a man, an ox, and an eagle. So when you start seeing number four and it's in people or animals, pay attention to the how many different faces or how many different people, how many different things you're seeing God could be letting you know hey these are the things are the witness of of spirits coming against you or this is the the cloud of witnesses coming to um help you you know it just again depends on the context of the dream um so you have a deliverance prayer in your study guide um so I'm gonna just pray it father God I pray against spiritual strongholds and you thought you all pray because I'm look this is my house I pray against spiritual strongholds in my home. I cancel every spiritual weapon in your house. Um, but you know, you got to cancel your own stuff because I don't live there. Um, but I cancel every spiritual weapon. Y'all, it's in your book. You can use it. You can pray it and mean business when you do. Take your oil and, and, and boy, I'm, I'm telling you, I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's almost like it's just sitting right here. Um, oh, Jesus, hard to breathe. Whew. When you, 
go through your house and you begin to do deliver. I'm t- I feel it so strong. I don't know if somebody on here needs deliverance, but geez, it's so heavy. Um, as you go through your house, you get your oil, pray, turn on your worship, ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you if there's anything that needs to go out, if there's anything that you need to lay hands on that may have been given to you, that may have a spirit attached to it that is monitoring you, he will bring it back to your remembrance. He will give you revelation. He will give you insight, foresight. Remember, we learned about the different the um, the the different seers. You got foresight. You got insight. You got hindsight. You can get all these sights, all these visions from things that may not be of God. Um, I cancel every spiritual weapon the enemy is using against my business, my home, and land. I ask that as you bring all things to my remembrance that you give me the strength to renounce, return, and reject every evil thing. Hallelujah. I am humble and teachable, Lord. So I ask this in Jesus' name, that you be my rabbi and give me spiritual understanding and wisdom in all these things written written in by your servant for my spiritual growth. May you bless your servant richly for their obedience, as a student in your word, I learned to operate in your word. I call out all demons masquerading and deceiving me. The Lord rebukes you, devil. Now go in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I exercise all power, all authority given to me as an heir of the kingdom of God. You promised us there would be signs accompanying us because we believe. So I come out of agreement with demonic devices that I may bind the hand of the strong man. I bind up demonic forces trying to interrupt my dreams. I disarm every demonic power and every power of wickedness coming against my home and land, my property and my business. And in Jesus name, I command every spiritual stronghold and every spiritual contamination that's related to this place to go now in Jesus name name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that tonight has blessed you all. Um, Again, if the word blessed you, uh, you can always sow into the ministry. I thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, staying on and covering and warring. Uh, I pray that you enjoyed it. I know I did. (laughs) We had some interruptions, but Holy Spirit always going to get the glory. Uh, If there's any questions or anyone has a dream, I'm going to actually turn this off now because I don't want your dreams recorded.